Welcome back. We have an exciting episode for you today. Um, I've been wanting to have her on for a while. Uh, Tori Groh is an American commentator. She uses humor and sapphire and satire to expose bigger social issues. She's big on YouTube. She's big on TikTok. Really, really happy to have her here. Uh, hey, Tori, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I was joking with some of my clients. I'm like, she's more red pill than the other red pill guys. I'm, she's, I'm the gatekeeper. She's going she's gonna to red pill the shit out of uh, you, you guys aren't red pill enough. Yeah. Uh, so we're really excited to have you here. Uh, the first time we met, you actually were uh, producing and helping us with the Super Chat when we did yeah. uh, Access Vegas with, with Rolo. I'm just curious, like getting into this, can you talk about, because it's, it's kind of unusual, uh, for yeah. you to be getting into this whole uh, RP territory. Yeah, yeah, I get qu I get asked that a lot. Um, when I first started making video content, I was making what seemed to be red pill esque content, but I didn't know it at the time. And so I don't know if you use TikTok, do you? Yeah, I do. Okay, when you go live, it's like thousands of people just spamming, kind of like Twitch. Yeah, and they were like. Rolo Tomasi, Rolo Tomasi, Rolo Tomasi. I was like, who's Tolo Ramasi? Like, I didn't even, I couldn't even remember his name. And they were like, you have to get him on your podcast. And I was like, okay, my TikTok podcast. And so then I reached out to him. He got back to me. I started reading his book. So like in between being like, yeah, let's meet. I think Rolo thought I read the book already. Yeah. I didn't. I played it off like I did though. And he was like, yeah, I'm gonna be in Miami to do Fresh and... No, he didn't say that yet. He was like, I'm gonna be in Miami. And I was like, me too. I wasn't. <laughs> like I had already <laughs> left. Make it till you make it. I, yeah, make it till you make it. Yeah, no, I left Miami and I was like, fudge i'm gonna just go i'm gonna just go so i got a ticket i was like yeah i'll be there tomorrow he's like great i was like get me on fresh and fit i didn't know he was doing fresh and fit at the time so i didn't know that they that's knew the video each of other. you sitting to his right uh was that the first time you met straight him? hair i look like yeah. blonde yes yeah and then you did an interview with him where he's like sitting on a balcony mm-hmm Okay, got it. Okay. There was more to that. Um, it's lost somewhere, but I have it through TikTok, which was the longer version and yeah. better quality. But yeah, that was our first interview. And then ever since then, I just started doing episodes on his essays because they put you into like a, the hole, like yeah. the rabbit hole. Uh, I, I would do uh, for my, my coaching program on Wednesdays of the week you come stay here for my coaching program, I beat the shit out of these dudes. We play basketball, but like violent. Like we <sighs> love it. I make them chase after basketball because I, I can't make them box. Yeah. And uh, at the end, we do read uh, Hypergamy Doesn't Care. Like that is one of the one of the things we don't we I make the guys read it out loud. And like a <laughs> yeah. lot of them, you can see they start breaking down, especially really. The ones, the ones that have lost kids, yeah. like to in a, in a divorce settlement, yeah. the ones that have gone through a divorce, it gets mm -hmm. real silent afterwards because, like, fuck, man, this yeah. is real. Because what happens is a lot of times, and we'll, we'll go into this in just a second. A lot of the things they talk about in Red Pill, as a man, you kind of knew they were there, but no one had expressed them. Right? That's how we feel. Yeah, no one had no one had put a, a word a word to it. Yeah, and then when you finally hear somebody saying these things that you had inherently felt, uh, then then it's it's a very a powerful emotional thing. Now for me, yeah. it was a, a thing like, okay, cool. This is now the new information. Let me change my life. For other people, it's like, oh, okay, this is the new information. Fuck women. Like that's that's the way uh, that that's the way it comes through. I've seen some guys. They get go very through angry. rage, but they've always go. come right through. Yeah. Like I would get a lot of guys that would spam my chats or whatever, like F you bitch. And I was like, okay, let's talk about it. I would put his comment up. I'm like, he's not pissed at me. He's pissed at women, sure. but like he's just using me as the punching bag, I guess, if you want to say. Yeah. But then I ended up, this is interesting. This is a red pill truth, okay? I would give them the wrench in my chats, even though they were calling me oh. horrible names. And you guys would be surprised what men will do when you give them responsibility. Yeah. They acted so right. Like that, not to say that they need to act in favor of me, but they, they took it with such pride. They were banning people that were saying mean <laughs> things about me and shit. You like, know, that's, yeah. what, that's what they do in prison. And that's also what they do in, when you're in a military unit. Is yeah. They take the most irresponsible person and then they make them the group leader. Yeah. And, and it, it changes yeah, things. It changes you. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know that about the group leader. Yeah. That's insane. Uh, can you describe a lot of my audience? Audience, you know, is not in this community. Can you describe what red pill means, where mm, it comes from, yeah. uh, and then the other kind of pills? Yeah, sure. I don't know that much about certain other ones, but I can give some, like, a little short synopsis. But red pill, all it is, back in 
years ago, it was just a space for men to develop their sex or share notes on their sexual strategy. So now it's branched off into like MGTOW, purple pill, uh, bl black pill. These, we don't really, how do I put this? We don't. There's no union. They don't, we don't yeah. all meet up once a week and then, you know, yeah. just determine names. People just kind of like. Yeah. I think what people do though is, uh, you know, how people want to be categorical For in sure. their thinking. And when you get stuck in rage, let's say, or you're unattractive, like if you start consuming black pill content, which is looks maxing and stuff, like it's strictly looks, then you end up going that way. Red pill is always like the one that's like, here's info, do what you want with it. We don't care if you're here. Like yeah. that's all. MGTOW is usually in my experience, guys that have been really fucked over in divorce. And I'm talking, what is it called when the wife takes the kid um, and doesn't even say anything? It's like a child abduction, yeah. but parental or something. And they have no rights. I've had guys on my podcast that would talk about it and they were overseas. And so they had to get like the UN involved and stuff. It's a huge thing. And anyway, so there's that. And then where was I going? Purple pill is the red lens, which is red pill with your blue pill idealism, like mm. on top of it. Yeah. Um, I have a tendency to fall in this area when I go live and they're annoying me. I'm like, I hate my audience. Shut up. Let me be romantic for a moment. Sure. I'm a woman. Like I can be so red pill aware, but I'll never be uh, like, I'll never truly understand the struggles that men go through. So the difference between sympathy and empathy. That no, I, this is something that I disagree with okay. heavily from my neuroscience background. Okay, so I studied science, biochemistry, pharmacology, all that good stuff. Never graduated, degenerate. I got tits instead. Hi, dad. But like, anyway, so when I and I'm not saying that the talking points about sympathy and empathy are necessarily wrong, but like, you'll never understand how it is to be a woman, of course not. If anything you look at it like, oh no, if you have like a daughter, you're just like panicked. You're yeah. like, I kind of know how men are, but I don't know women. So not to say that we're equal slates or whatever, but I'm just saying, so like empathy, women typically actually have more empathy, just the way that our genes express, like men have a tendency to mm -hmm. develop psychopathy or they have a, they have a better chance of getting it because of the X chromosomes. Like with women, if you get an X and an X from a mom, it'll just cancel out. It doesn't cause we're X, X. Women are know? XX and men are XY. Yeah. Yeah. I love this topic, but like this one I go hard on. Yeah. I just, but anyways, okay, really? so, so in, in general, and there's some, there's some debate about this. So basically the idea is between borderline personality disorder and mm -hmm. uh, antisocial personality disorder, which is sociopathy. Yeah. And we were going to get, I was going to ask you about cluster B. Sure personality disorders. The belief is in general, and Dr. Buss actually agrees with this, but mm -hmm. I don't know how much he studies this, is that men tend to be uh, diagnosed as sociopaths, whereas women tend to be diagnosed as borderline. For sure. And they, so they did a study where they took these same diagnosticians. They yeah. did not allow you to see the gender of the person you were diagnosing, but just showed the same presenting attributes. Mm. And what they found is that all of a sudden these women who were diagnosed as borderline are now getting diagnosed as sociopaths. And so the idea, so do, the, again, this is Dr. Martha Stout. She brings yeah. this up in her book called The Sociopath Next Door. In the second book, she actually talks about how she personally believes that sociopathy is normally distributes amongst men and women the same. Now, that's her theory. Mm -hmm. it, it, obviously, you got to do a, a lot more studies. Opinion. You have a lot more studies by, by this, but she believes that borderline is more often misdiagnosed uh, uh, in women when they're actually psychopaths and then the vi uh, vice versa with men. Uh, so I've worked in woman shelters i've i have a very diverse background i worked in women's shelters i've worked in homeless shelters i've worked in i actually sat in on groups where they would identify themselves as sociopaths or psychopaths mm -hmm. insane great people do you believe that they were so to, to me that sounds like somebody who has uh, either a neurosis or is a narcissist well, it doesn't sound like an actual psychopath. so like you telling me that i i think what she I'm not a doctor. I don't have a degree. My opinion doesn't matter. I don't know shit. Your opinion does matter, but I understand what you're saying. Like if you, in case in, somebody watch, you're just, yeah. just don't eat paint. That's my whole thing. Yeah. So anyways, like women have a tendency to have bipolar disorder, but the worst type of combination is uh, borderline 
personality disorder with narcissistic tendencies yeah, so and that's what i think the women are having i don't think it's sociopathy because yeah. sociopathy it, maybe in the workplace it would be present but it's typically not it, there's there's no way you would have to have that gene in my opinion so, so about 40 percent of people who have borderline personality disorder are, are also suffer from antisocial personality disorder sociopathy and psychopathy those are not diagnostic terms those are just terms yeah right right right, right. Um, well, yeah. technically they are. So like antisocial personality factor one would be psychopathy. Uh, and then antisocial factor two is sociopathy. It's just, it's just how the behavior manifests. It yeah. can be different. But I'd have to look at that. I'd be really interested. I, I don't know that I believe a person would sit at a table and explaining that they're a sociopath and they're actually a sociopath. Yeah, like something tells me they were like trying to manipulate that test. Uh, correct. It's not just manipulate the test. It's like they find some level of identity by telling people that they're sociopaths because they, mm. they think that it's cool. Like an actual sociopath wouldn't care enough to do that. I, I, that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. So the, the best way that I describe uh sociopaths and psychopaths and i think that this has translated well in in like my community that gets it because like well i'll do case studies and they'll they'll call it out and it'll be a hard one like jeffrey dahmer is a hard one to yeah. and i'm not a doctor so i it, it's just for fun but when you think about psychopaths i think about a trained pit bull I say pit bull because they can be dangerous. And then a sociopath is an untrained African dog, like the wild ones. Yeah. So like their their risk assessment and their emotional, uh, like their risk assessment around the amygdala. Oops, sorry. No, Go you're ahead. fine. It's um, It was never fully developed. Yes. Like they don't have a sense of um, regularity, like emotional regulation, whatever you call it. The yeah. psychopaths, because they lack the the fully, I don't want to say fully developed amygdala. So, so it's it's their autonomic nervous system doesn't function the same way. So, like for instance, do you remember the scene where uh, Jeffrey Dahmer is being pulled over and there's body parts in the back of the car? Jeffrey Dahmer's his heart rate doesn't go up, his palms don't sweat, his pupils don't dilate. And going through an entire life where you're in these fight or flight mm -hmm. situations and your body does not react in fight or flight mm -hmm. causes you to not be socially calibrated. Well, and that's part of this. That's part of where the sociopathy comes from. Yeah, so I agree with you, um, but there's this really important part of the brain. It's your ventricular anterior cortex, v VAC, I believe. It's the thing that wraps around the amygdala. And so what happens is when your amygdala isn't fully developed, we're talking psychopaths. Yeah. And then that thing around it is your ration. So they think what they're doing is rational. Mm. And that's where that whole are males psychopaths because men are typically be are the logical and rational uh, thinkers amongst the sexes questionable. But that's that's where that comes from. Like the other ones, they just don't have this mm -hmm. or they don't have um, emotional stability because this it's like not fully developed. And then that ration around it. I don't know. They have their own moral compass, though, like in the groups and stuff They're They're very, very um good people and a lot of people will say well they're manipulating i'm like no they shunned a girl because she was cheating on her boyfriend yeah i don't know if those are psychopaths I, no I, they are you sure you're sure 100 huh, percent. interesting yeah okay. they got the stare and everything they're okay. very charming okay you probably work with some i definitely work with some yeah in fact I, this is one thing we discussed was that if if psychopathy is because of genetic if it's normally distributed amongst a, a population yeah you're going to find cities like miami and las vegas and los angeles you're going to find them attracted to those cities mm -hmm. so whereas you might experience four and a half percent normally you're going to experience something like seven percent inside yeah. in, in miami 7% of the people you account will be psychopaths as yeah. opposed to 4.5% if you lived in Des Moines, Iowa. And they're like nonviolent most of the time. Of course, most sociopaths are not yeah. serial killers. Like the most they'll do is take one of your ideas in the corporate workplace and wait for you to be sick and then present it to the boss as if it was their own. Like that's the type of, which is not that far off from like what you deal with right. in a workplace. So I don't know. Um, the idea of facts over feelings, right? So this is, uh, mm -hmm. and, and Rolo and I were discussing last night, yeah. we were kind of talking about this, this part, and you mentioned before about purple pill, right? You, you, mm -hmm. ha you understand these things yeah. and that you're still, you want to be a romantic. There's nothing wrong with being a romantic, but I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. You can't just, no, I do what I want. Do you agree with his estimation that there is no soulmate? 
Yeah. 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 I had to come. That was a hard one to come yeah. to terms with. I was going to ask you what was the hardest truth you probably had to swallow. Mine was chick crack for sure. Like go into that. What, <laughs> what, what were some of the things that you had a hard time with? Um, like right off the bat. Astrology? Just in general, red pill. Like I, I knew to a level of extent that men would do things for vagina. Yeah. But I didn't know that they did everything for it. Yeah. Like, I, and that was a hard thing for me to swallow because obviously my sexual strategy is to lock down somebody. So, and then I got Rolo telling me that men are more idealistic and I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm the idealistic one. But I think, I think if women weren't picky, we'd still be living in caves. No, I think women should be picky. No, no, I agree. Yeah. I'm saying if we, the, I, oh, the, it, I see what it you're is, saying. It is the pickiness that cause we can go down the line of like, I, or, uh, Einstein leaving his wife, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, Steve Jobs, multiple uh, models that he That's dated. That's a sociopath. Um, uh, <laughs> fucking Elon Musk, you know, multiple high status women. Yeah. Grimes, whoever. We can go Grimes. down. <laughs> we can go down the list of you know uh, Jeff Bezos cheating. Like we can go down the list of these high, what we would consider to be very functional, competent, intelligent men. Yeah. That had options. Forget about the fact they're billionaires. They just had options, and then they chose to express those options. We can see that over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so you know when you when you see that over and over again. Um, the thing is with the, the soulmate idea, you asked me before, what was the hardest thing for me to swallow from mm -hmm. the red pill idea? And it wasn't anything. And the reason why is because I managed a strip club. What, what yeah. you talk about in red, what, what they, the, the ideas you discuss in red pill, i saw the worst of the worst nightclubs here. Yeah, I go. mean, you see the wives cheating. You but see it. it, it it's not, it's not that it, it's, it's not just that it's here are the thing is a woman telling me these are the attributes I look for a man while she is consistently being beaten by her boyfriend oh, and yeah. coming to work over and over again. And then just coming to this almost like hitting a brick wall as a 22 year old guy being like, wow, something is fucking broken here. Like the, the message that I was told at my Baptist church by the television programs I that I watch and by my family, yeah. something is fucking broken here. Yeah. And then I w would watch these women and like, again, I'm 22 and I would see these women who I consider to be very attractive. I'm 22 working in a strip club in Austin, Texas. And, they're, and I'm just like, you're saying that you want this char charismatic, nice. kind guy and you, get, you give me all these attributes and your, bo your husband who looks like a fucking troglodyte is beating you and you're not leaving, something's wrong. Yeah. And that, that was, to me, everything that came after that, I was like, okay, I, I, I'm already disillusioned. I'm already, yeah. I've taken some pill, you know? Yeah. Uh, so so th I see that, the, that's why it was a little easier for me. The guys, they're taught, they're taught from a young age, like to appeal to the feminine. Like they're the smart ones. Like they're the holders of truth and stuff. And so you, you end up, you want to be nice to them and all this stuff. And then you see that that's not getting you anywhere. Getting and you anywhere, the biggest yeah. thing that I hear from guys, that's why I asked you is realizing that my masculinity is almost like disgusting as sure. a guy. And then realizing that niceness component. And I was like, really? I thought that was a well-known thing. No, definitely not. That's why it, I it, always it, say, like, let me see your phone. When these girls <laughs> say, this is my type. I'm like, yeah, let me see your DMS. You <laughs> fucking liar. Like the, uh, the, yeah, that was definitely an issue for me. Um, there were, I mean, there were a couple of things that I saw, you know, growing up that that really just like changed my mm -hmm. belief. But it was it was one of these things where I I saw it and then instead I did not have any kind of emotional reaction to it. What I had was, okay, I need to see. I remember there's like seven girls and they're fighting over the same guy. This this really? this, this fucking place I'm working at, this strip club, <laughs> and I was like, I need to see what this dude is doing. Yeah. Okay. Now here's where the rubber meets the road and where there's a lot of misconception or at least what I've seen mm -hmm. was the women will say he's an asshole, right? Bob, so Bob, the bartender's an asshole, I know where you're going. right? But yeah. Alex, the accountant is sweet and nice. Mm -hmm. And you know, I say this, sorry if it offends you, women vote with their vaginas. And, and I was like, okay, so which did you sleep with? Like they'll be complaining about Bob, the bartender and they'll talk about Alex, the accountant and Alex, the accountant is sweet and nice and he's validated all these things she wants. Yeah. And I'm like, but you slept with Bob the bartender. She's like, of course I slept with Bob the That's bartender. That's why she's mad. That's why she's mad. And I'm like, okay, let me let me just get this straight. So I could be nice like Alex the accountant, mm -hmm. and you'll say these nice things about me, and we but we don't have sex. You make me wait, or it's not like that because we're friends, and I'm like a brother. Or I could be like Bob the bartender. You'll complain about me, but you'll have sex with me, complain about me, then have sex with me again. Is that what, what I'm to understand? Uh, and and yeah. and begrudgingly they'll be like, yeah, that is what's going on. And I'm I've had a really different sexual like 
experience. Like I, I'm well known in the space for going for security and like parental investment. I was always looking for a husband. I've been proposed to, but they had other issues that, and I had issues. Don't forget me. I always, I always do that. Women always do that too. You notice that when like you ask them about their exes and they'll be quick to say something about them. But I, I'll never say what it was, but it had to do something beyond their control and I couldn't do anything to fix it, if that makes sense. But anyways, women always want to fix shit. But so I've always been looking for a husband. So I would go for guys I wasn't attracted to. I didn't have, and I've never said I would talk about sex on YouTube ever. It sometimes comes up, women. But like, I just started having good sex about a month ago. Like, now I'm like, oh, does, I want to go everywhere and tell people about does, it. Does he know about it? Of course he does. <laughs> okay, good. I was just making sure. But like, <laughs> how funny would it be the first time he finds out that he that you're having hey, good sex babe. is on this show? <laughs> well, yeah, but like, I'm talking. All my exes thought that I orgasmed with them. I never did. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, that's the first time they're finding out about it. Oh, it was on the show. Hi, my hoes. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's awesome. Welcome. So yeah. Good. And like, I lied to every single one. Like, yeah. yeah, you're the first one to do it. Like, we're bad. Like, that's a deep, that's going to hurt their feelings. But that's something that guys should know. Women could literally be saying, you're the best. You're the only person that did this. Yeah. And you haven't done shit. Yeah. But sure. that could also be, I would find that as, so taking myself out of it for a second, I, if a girl said that, I'd be like red flag, red flag. But I never had a hoe phase. I've always been in long-term relationships. That was my first downfall. If I would have gone for the guy that is your foam cannon party dude, like you, I always <laughs> use you instead. You're the, <laughs> why, why he's the foam cannon party dude. It's great. <laughs> no, no, but no. I'm like, if I would have done that, I probably wouldn't have been so confused as to why I didn't want to marry these guys. Oh, got it. Yeah, because I, I would avoid sex at all costs. It's not it's not that I wouldn't do it. Like I would, And it was always consensual. So neocortex is identifying traits in these men, logically trying to make yourself attracted to them, right? But limbic system is like, I can't, I am not physiologically aroused by these I had no emotion. Men. Got it, okay. None. Yeah. And I was fully aware of that. Like I was really understanding of all relationship dynamics, human nature. I was bartending since I was 18. Mm. Like I was very aware of it. And girls would talk about sex and I'm like, I could live without it. What's wrong with you guys? Isn't that crazy? I think that they're all lying when they talked about orgasming. I was like, you're fucking lying, dude. Like have, I don't Have you met that. women that just like have 14 orgasms and Yeah, I was like, you're full of shit. You don't know what an orgasm is. Like I was seriously yeah. like deluded. And I was like, whoa. Isn't it crazy the 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 divide the divergence mm -hmm. in the way women experience sex. Yeah. And the lack of divergence in the way men do. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like uh, this is gonna sound we're getting a little technical here. Women's vaginas are shaped differently. Yeah. And the way they experience pleasure is different. And I didn't understand that before because yeah. here's the thing. I'd be with one girl and she would tell me, I fucking hate this, this, and this. And I'd be the next be, be with yeah. the next girl and she'd be like, if you don't do the same three things, this, this, and this, I'm fucking breaking up with you. I'm just like, wait, the last girl told me she hated that. Yeah. And then this girl, and then you go and you read Why Women Have Sex by <clears throat> David Buss and Sidney Mastin, 237, yeah. by the way, these are anonymously surveyed women, 237 reasons why they say that they, they have sex. I, I, I have a friend of mine. I have to read this. Yeah, it's, you never read it? I haven't oh, read that. It's fantastic. There's, I have a friend of mine and she would ask me to do things that were really bad. Like that if you had walked in on us uh, and you didn't know what was going on, you'd call the police. She would do that because she wants to appeal to you. No. Yes, she, trust me. I'm telling you, this girl, before we're gonna be, argue about be, this. Be, before this, she would do it. She talked about this with her husband. Like, I'm talking about putting a fucking bag over her head. I never did this. But no, she, I know. Right, like crazy shit. And then uh, afterwards, me, I would I sit next, next to her on the bed. I'm like, babe, in the bedroom, I'll do whatever you want. But outside of here, I'm never calling you a fucking whore in front of your friends. I'm not doing that. You're not going to whisper it yeah. in her ear? No, but her, well, maybe, maybe. No. But her, but, but her ex-husband had done this to her before. And I just remember thinking like, like the, it, it, that's not the point I'm trying to make is not whether or not she was doing it for me. The point I'm trying to make is the divergence in what I've been asked to do as a man yeah. is shocking. 
Like I can't like, I remember one girl was the wildest girl I've ever met. If you touched her throat though, she'd freak out. You know how many girls asked me to choke them? But this one girl, if you touched her throat, she would almost spasm, freak out, like get the fuck away from me. Cause she was sexually assaulted in the military. Is that what she was the guy convicted? Yeah, he was convicted. He was, okay. Yeah, he went to jail for a long time. In fact, his wife was crying being like, why are you doing this to our family? It's like your husband raped me. Well, you gotta raped. understand it from the wife. No, no, of, like, course, of course, of course. She's being a, a of course. victim. Yeah, in a situation where she shouldn't be yeah. like, but, uh, but, but like, could, but, but like th these things. And also I'll tell you another thing, uh, the women who have been sexually assaulted and then start being, finding themselves extremely attracted to men who turn out to be homosexual. This is a like, oh, yeah. massive. Ad. Yeah. I, 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 three, four dozen women I know that have done this and they're like, Hey, it, yeah, I don't know why Bob doesn't want to have sex with me, but it's okay. Cause Bob dresses really well. I'm like, Bob likes men. Yeah. No, 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 Bob's not like that. No, Bob likes men, but they've confused this 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 thing where they're, they're with a, a, a very f a physically attractive man yeah. and he never initiates sex in her mind she feels like that sex she sees the Safe. muscles and he never initiates sex so she doesn't feel like she's going to get raped and she completely misses the fact that he's into men yeah two three dozen times i've seen this and it's just mind-boggling to me like how do you not know that your dude is like that and they're like they just complete and total denial yeah. that they're dating a, a guy who's in the closet and it's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. It's yeah. almost like an adaptation for women to do this. Another one. Because the, the, but them too, they shouldn't be the one. Like men would take themselves out of the gene pool when yeah. they didn't find themselves useful to women. So yeah. single pretty much. Well, I mean, but yeah, women, sometimes, yeah, for but sure. But I've been saying like women, I don't know if you watched one of my videos that was done by an old red pill blogger, Archwinger, but like women, I'll talk about that in a bit. We'll go back to that. But like women, I think on some biological level, like they don't want to pass down their traumatic genes because your genes mm, change okay. when you go through You're trauma. You're talking about epigenetics. Yes, yes, yes. It, like, so it's either, I've thought maybe it's that. Obviously, I don't think you could test for that, but I find it fascinating when women start to take themselves out of the gene pool. And they, Interesting. I, I really want to dive into the whole homosexuality in general. Like I want to be able to talk about what their stats are so, and stuff. So two two books I would recommend for that is one is The Ape That Understood the Universe by Stephen Stuart Williams. I have that one. I haven't read it yet though. The other one is um, Why Beautiful People Have More Daughters by Satoshi Kanazawa. And in the back, oh. at the end of the book, they go over this concept of where does homosexuality fit as far as evolutionary psychology is concerned. And there's two theories. One of them is the idea of altruism and the other one is yeah. of kin selection. Or yeah, rather, that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the idea. Basically, it, it, every once in a while you would have uh, a male who would not be interested in the other females, therefore like yeah. allowing more f provisioning to the men who are interested in females. And Dan Bilzerian, he talked about it. He goes, what do you I think about, just listening what, to... what do you think about, what do you think about when gay guys come to your party when he was on Nelk Boys yeah. and, and there was in Dan's response was no they go to the front of the line women love when gay men are at my parties and these gay men I, don't hit on the girls i the, all the gay men you want can come to my party i've been saying this forever to guys that are throwing events i'm like i know you want all girls mm -hmm. i know i'm the one that gets the girls like how you get the girls but like we gotta let in the gays the no. gays bring the hottest bitches one you are not and incorrect. they're they're the ones in the bathroom telling you to fuck the dude it's not the girls like people think it's not the girls deciding the fate of your dick it's the gay guy and he'll tell you to fuck him every time yeah it's 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 pretty nuts uh, but yeah the, the one other one other archetype that i've seen mm -hmm. it is the woman who has been assaulted or had dealt with a very toxic man and then from that point forward chooses the most over steroided monstrous human that i've ever seen okay six four like at back acne tremble was she in her peak huh? <laughs> I'm just I, I, kidding. Whenever. but I, I see this regularly whenever i i meet a lot of these women who date these like roided up monsters mm -hmm. and they're they're sent there tends to be on balance some sort of sexual trauma in the past where it's like i need a man who looks like a gorilla to protect me and so that mm -hmm. that it, it seems to be some kind of adaptation that i've seen noticed you know seen from women and that's the thing as far as as far as men we would all look at Margot Robbie in Wolf of Wall Street, or we'd look at mm. Selma Hayek in uh, Dust Till Dawn, or we'd all look at Vivica Fox or whatever, and we'd all, are, are these women attractive? 100%, 100 men out of 100. Yeah. These women are all attractive. Yes. You could get away with it, no one would find out about it. Could, would you have sex with these women? 100 out of 100 <laughs> men, we would have sex with them. And then you try to do the same thing with women, and it doesn't work. Post Malone. 25% of men, like, oh my God, women, she'd be like, oh my God, he's so attractive. I don't know. A, a few of them, you don't think they would? 
And I'm, you think 100% of women would find Post Malone attractive? No, 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 no. But I'm thinking you're saying there's no instance where a woman was like, would be like, I'll risk it to like fuck him? Is no, no. What, what I'm saying? saying is if I took 100 women in oh. a room and proposed different men to them, yeah. like Jason Momoa maybe being the highest. Oh, because women are all like, eh, there's, no. There's a few yeah. women that would not do it. And even if they found him sexually attractive, would not have sex with him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even if it's Christian Grey. Yeah. It's like, well, Christian Grey, mm-hmm. dude. Christian Grey is like the most unhealthy fucking like you want to talk about men being addicted to porn. Women reading Fifty Shades of Grey is like one of the most unhealthy things. Really? So he's a billionaire with a huge penis and then he just was with you and he didn't fuck other women. Got it. Oh, no, I got this. Women should read this. This is going to be very helpful for their love life. No, it was a disaster. I really. She's not even like pushing a six. Like she's a five. But come on. No, no, I'm talking about the books. I'm not. In the the book, she's like a ten. But like, is uh, she? Yeah, in the book, she's very attractive. No, she's very nerdy still. She's attractive. Okay, like keep that, going. Or it, uh, to Christian, she's attractive. And before anyone asks, I read everything. When yeah, no, t- I, he pulls stats. Yeah. I was like pulling them up and you're like, oh, is it the one that was like cited by blah, blah, blah? Yeah. I was just like stunned. Yeah. It left an impression. When, when like, people oh. specifically tell me to not read a book, those are the books I read. Like, don't read Fifty, 50 Shades of Grey. It's terrible. It's like, all right, fuck you. I'm going to read it. And it, you're right. It is That's terrible. That's why you understand women yeah, so well. It's, it's fucking terrible. They do. They uh, but no, but like, even like Mein Kampf. I read, tried to read Mein Kampf. Do you understand? That book is terrible. It like, I'm sorry. I'm not saying Horrible. it's bad. I'm not saying bad. But it's bad because an anti-Semite re- wrote the book. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's no, bad no. because he writes the book like a fucking 12-year-old. Yeah. That's the reason why it's bad. Yeah. Okay. I also think Ulysses by James Joyce is a little bit overrated. Like the I book, am, the book I doesn't am. make any fucking sense. So anyway, like I read everything. I read books that people don't <laughs> want me to read. I specifically the the fucking uh, uh, what's it called the the one by Karl Marx and Engels um, about communism. I can't remember, but anyway, Marxism. Yeah, Marxism. I, I read everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Communist Karl Manifesto. Yeah, yeah, I read yeah. the Communist Manifesto. And I'm reading it and I'm like, oh cool, these are interesting points, but you're wrong. And then that was yeah. it. I don't get mad about it. How so, long does it take you what? to read a book? Communist you... Manifesto is not long. Mein Kampf is a little too long. Are uh, you reading or are you listening? I'm listening most of the time. Okay. Yeah. For the guys. Yeah. They it's funny. It chips. sucks because Adolf Hitler doesn't actually do the audiobook, so it's, it would be better. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it would probably be better. <sighs> it's uh, good. Anyway. It's too soon. Yeah. Too soon. Kanye. <laughs> Sorry. Like, too soon. Sorry I about laughed. that. I laughed. Yeah. You liked it? Okay. Um, so th- let's talk about this. I, I thought it was really interesting because you talked about women don't blame themselves in some some situations. The idea, so I have a friend of mine. Um, what do you mean so not you're, playing that? You're, you're going to, you'll, you'll understand what I said. Okay. You're going to, y'all will all know who she is as soon as I say it, but I'm not going to say her name. She comes on my podcast and she expresses a view that is very clearly outside the realm of evolutionary psychology. Okay. Okay. She says things like basically men should allow themselves to be cucked. And she comes on my podcast. She says this and I'm like, okay, let me, I'm going to let you speak. And then you say what you're going to say. And then I'm not going to get mad, but I am going to exp- express to you from an evolutionary standpoint, why what you're saying doesn't really make sense. And most men are not going to agree with you. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, they need to be open-minded. They're going to agree with me. And so we start making TikTok clips of the video and every one of them, she's getting fucking eviscerated. She's it getting m- yeah. molly whopped 56 to nothing, just destroyed. Like in every one of them. Finally, she tells me, stop posting these clips. And then she starts calling me a narcissist. Once again, let her come on my podcast. You're not a narcissist. I, 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 once again, I let her come on my podcast. I explained to her in the most calm way I could. The men are not going to agree with you. Regardless, you, I, I, I'm pulling for you. I want your podcast to do well. And the fact that you have a different viewpoint than mine is the reason why I'm having you on my podcast. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what the audience is going to say. And I'm going to tell you what the science says. And if you don't agree with it, that's fine. But that doesn't make me wrong because I'm using stats. Yeah. And you write because you're using your feelings. Just get ready for it. And then that's what happened. Oh, oh then okay. Then not it's you like specifically, Sam. her. It's like, bring it. <laughs> then um, she, I, I interview Richard Hart. And it's a three-hour interview. And while I'm doing the interview, she writes me because my social media manager, but for those of you who don't know, I don't post the stuff on my IG. My social media manager does that. Mm-hmm. She posts another clip from this girl. And in this one, she's getting destroyed. And she writes me, she goes, please take this down. I'm doing an interview with Richard Hart. This is at like 12, it starts at noon, about 1230. She's like, take this down. At 143, she's like, you didn't take this down. You're a narcissist and I'm blocking you. I'm still interviewing Richard Hart. I can't even get to my phone at this point. Yeah. Okay. And then this is where it gets the best part. She, you know how you can do collabs on IG? Yeah. She accepts the collab. So even though she's getting eviscerated, she wanted the attention. So she accepts the collaboration. Maybe she thought it would give her authority to take it down. Maybe, maybe that's what yeah, I, but she, because but she could have reputation's take, really big for a woman. Yeah, but she, she could have taken it down herself and she oh. did I mean, she, I'm not taking her down herself. She could have taken all, removed the collab. She did not. Gotcha. And, and then I immediately delete it. I hit her up. I was like, Hey, I took it down and then she blocks me. And so th- this is the reason why it's not, not that big of a deal specifically with her, but I just mm-hmm. wanted to give an anecdotal uh, example of yeah. this whole thing. 
when you don't validate sometimes what a woman says, mm -hmm. her response is, you are bipolar, you're a narcissist, right? Things like this. And my point is, when a man, this happened to me on my life. I told the girl, we're not going to be monogamous. Okay, it's fine. You can leave now if you want. No, I don't want to leave. We're not going to be monogamous. I understand we're not going to be monogamous. Were you clear? Very clear. And then I, extremely clear. When we're not together, don't ask me what I'm doing. That's what I told her. And then I was very obvious with her. After a while, she starts mm -hmm. stepping on other girls like that she knows that I'm talking to. She starts putting words in their yeah, head. Yeah, we do that yeah. when that happens. Uh, yeah, 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 let's have a threesome. Every time we were about to have a threesome, she would shoot the whole fucking thing down. This girl, do I remember one time? Really? Uh, th this girl was like, uh, she, I was like, hey, let's bring this girl home. She obviously wants to have a threesome with us. And the, and then the, the the girl I was with, she goes, no, she doesn't want to have a threesome with him. The girl like grabs my dick. And then I'm like, yeah, she does. Who's and she, hotter? Huh? My girl. And then, and then she's like... Oh. Uh, and then she just shoots the whole thing down. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And then proceeds to tell people that I'm a narcissist because I didn't validate what she wanted. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. When a man doesn't validate what you want, that doesn't make him a narcissist. Have you seen this frequently? Like this is like this buzzword, almost like racist. I would say like uh, you're either, I know why you're like narcissist, insecure, you're stupid, like I'm going to make your life a living hell. Like it's all, it, it all goes together, but keep going. Mostly narcissists. Yeah, but, yeah. but I'm saying it's narcissism has a meaning. It's a oh, cluster. Here we B, go. It's a cluster B personality In girl disorder. girl world, feelings rule. Yes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you think it should be. Because yes. what happens is a, guy's, a guy will disregard it. And that's when you, you start the fire a yeah. little bit. And every time you just try to push it down, push it down, you're just telling her that she doesn't matter as a human, that's yeah. how women perceive it. Because their feelings are them. Yeah. So when you don't, so when you don't, or in her eyes, when she's not human, what else could you be fucking with? If you're like, it's a narcissist that fucks with, uh, makes them feel like, like dehumanized. Yeah. So I can see the correlation. I don't think it's right. That's where I, I'm, I tried to tell bitches. Like just, so I literally told her, I was like, hey, you know, I rescue animals in my free time. And there's like, yeah, you do that to get attention. attention. Because you're a narcissist. You're a communal. Like, wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I mean, to be fair, I always say in order to do YouTube or any sort of podcast, you probably have a little bit of traits. Oh, you're on the traits. But the sure. narcissistic personality disorder is like legitimate. Like I have no empathy for other people. Like that's different. From well, it, it's patterns of behavior. If, if you have no narcissistic traits, you never cut in line and you never cut yeah. in traffic. If you have no narcissistic, narcissistic traits, <laughs> you go to fucking Walmart, let everybody skip you. Obviously, everyone has some. You need I some. Think so. I, but like when we get to the point where like what she was describing. And by the way, here's the other one. The other one was uh, gaslighting. So when I am like, hey, listen, I understand what you're saying, but your facts aren't feelings. Your, 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 your feelings aren't facts. I, I respect the fact that you have yeah. this feeling, but I want to let you know that it doesn't, like, for instance, I had this one girl, I'd buy her flowers, and then later she'd be like, you never do anything for me. I was like, oh, yeah, but I bought you flowers. In they her forget. Mind, they, they forget. Yeah, they, the it's like this selective, this selective forgetting. And then I try to explain to her, hey, just to let you know, that when I do these things for you, they're actually being done. I'll write, I'll write them down to prove it to you because it doesn't feel like they're being done. While your feelings do matter to you, they're mm -hmm. inside you. They don't change the world. The, the physics of the world doesn't change because your feelings. So when you I say, were dealing with a victim for narcissist. Sure. Where, did you feel like you had to record your conversations Sometimes, or else she sometimes. would say that you never said something? For, for sure. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Okay. We got to the point where I was, I was taking notes. And I remember, I remember doing this thing and I remember afterwards, uh, uh, it, then her just being like, yeah, you're gaslighting me. I'm like, no, no, because I'm telling you that you're, I, if I was telling you that your feelings don't matter at all, maybe you could say I was gaslighting. But if you're telling me that I'm saying that your feelings do not counter, countervene actual physical nature, that is not me gaslighting you. That's me telling you the fucking truth. Me asking you to do things to improve your life is not me gaslighting you. Mm -hmm. And so these are the problems that I have is that there's a lot of women out there who could be doing a lot to help themselves, but yeah. instead call their exes narcissists, all of them, yeah. and then say that their exes were gaslighting them when they weren't. Sometimes they are, but a lot of times uh, they're not. I've, I've dealt with one narcissist who stole my identity, a huge thing, yeah. like sold my identity on the dark web and shit. Like, like that has been the only time and i feel like i merch <laughs> that i study narcissism the most like i really go back into like the psychoanalytical research and or literature where they talk about the like projection which we hear that now it's yeah. more of like a pop evo psych whatever i don't know the terminology but like 
I hate when I well, say Psychological that. projection is a real thing. It's not pop psychology. Yeah, but like I'm talking when, when women do... So the thing you're talking about, women saying that, there's two types of women, maybe more, but women knowingly saying that because they know they're losing the argument. It's almost like when they give ultimatums. Yes. Same thing. So if they can loop you around enough times, you'll lose whatever you're talking about. Have you ever been like... Like in a converse or in a fight and they're like, yeah, what did I say? And you like can't remember because it's all just like, uh. Yeah, that doesn't happen with me. I remember every single fucking thing they said. And okay, I repeat good. it back and they get angry as shit because what they have to do is continually move the goalpost. Yeah. And this is the pro this is also the problem why with certain YouTubers I won't get into debates with because they mm -hmm. will not maintain the goalpost. Yeah. If we're having a debate on evolutionary psychology, don't change this into your moral quandary mm -hmm. we're having a debate on evolutionary psychology know. not on morals stop changing the fucking you and i call them out on it and they get even more angry and i'm like that's not i didn't yeah, come yeah. into this with anger i came into this with reason you continuing to change yeah. the the, the uh, this is men and women i used life. to be on debate so i'm really yeah. familiar yeah i can't say it. like stop moving the goalposts and yeah. i didn't come to you and now you making this personal is letting me know that you're losing and then they get even more angry you want to know a really good trick to to get them my dog has cancer no. Have you heard that one? That's a great one. When guys are like get, get going on YouTube don't, and like, my dog has cancer. Don't meet emotion with emotion. Be like, I hear you. Because yeah. you got to go back to building rapport, but there's a way you can do it specifically. You got to step back a little bit, but you got to be like, okay, under what circumstance are you willing to change your mind? And would that be from one to 10? Yeah. Because you said this about this. I'm just trying to know where you'd be at. And they might say, I'm not going to change my mind. And then you can come back with, well, that's kind of radical. You still agree with that? I would be like a five. You throw out a number. And they're like, okay, I'd probably be like a six. Be like, would you be willing to go even, even further? And you'd be surprised the more nice you are and the more you got to be like Mach Machiavelli. No, <laughs> Machiavellian, yeah. Yeah, and like they'll eventually get themselves to, well, I don't believe in that because I believe in religion or whatever. And then you're like, well, earlier you said that you would change that. So do you still believe in God? And just watch. It just goes haywire. Yeah. It is, it's unfortunate. Like, listen, if you could show me that the laws of physics didn't matter, like some of the flat earthers always do whenever I debate mm -hmm. them, then I would be open to listening to it. It's just, there's never, you've never shown me anything that does this. And then when I show you why the earth is round, this has literally happened to me. I'm using this as an example because it happened to me this week. Now the response is for you. The response is now for you to be personal, make personal attacks against me. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, they, it, that's it, just a short shot, not real debaters, but keep yeah, going. Yeah, for sure. Can we talk about this? Yeah. Uh, the the concept of free will. So one sure. of the one of the one of the difficulties with evolutionary psychology is that the belief is, especially when there's only sixty thousand humans on the planet, mm -hmm. that every single thing we do is based. So there's no there's no wasted motion. Every single proclivity we have has to aid in survival, mm -hmm. because the line between survival and extinction is so narrow yeah. that every single thing, the people we choose to mate with, the food we choose to eat, every single thing has to aid in survival. And then our ancestors who did, or not, they didn't become ancestors, but yeah. the, 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 these old humans mm -hmm. the, that didn't have those proclivities, the extreme example would be like, not a fear of snakes, not a fear of heights, not a fear of spiders. They all died. They didn't have kids. Yeah. And the ones that did, their uh, proclivities only aided in survival, okay? If you, if you extrapolate that to its ultimate uh, end, what mm -hmm. happens is humans think they have free will between chocolate and vanilla, but it's not between chocolate and poop. <laughs> they don't actually yeah. have free will. They, they eat things that are within the sugar, salt, fat category. Yeah. They eat carbs and protein because that's what they were built to digest. Yeah. And they choose hairstyles that make them what they believe to be relevant. They choose things that either give them sexual selection or choose things to pull them out of the mating place for someone else. Whatever reason, every single decision they make fits somewhere on the evolutionary scale and therefore free will is an illusion. This yeah. is this is kind of a theory that a lot of people this, have I, I believe in Robert Sapolsky's theory of evolution and he talks about how literally everything you breathe from this moment and whatever all the way back millions and millions of years has already predetermined what you're going to choose. We could go even further and say that the hairstyle I did, I knew before I knew I knew it. Mm. And that that's a whole nother rabbit hole. But it's fascinating. If you're into physics, you'll like this one. This one fucks me up all the time. But pretty much. So this is where it conflates with the red pill, though. So like the red pill is like take control of your life. Conflicts. Yeah. Conflicts. Yeah. Did I say something? Sorry. Con conflates means they're the same. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Conflicts. So like you in red pill, you take ownership of your life. Yes. You take ownership of your sexuality. 
like a woman's don't play her game, that whole thing. And that still applies. I'm just, when I talk about this whole, you never know, I always say be very certain and very cautious before you un before you say you understand exactly why someone did something mm. like when i was in my early 20s i was dealt with a lot of really big moral dilemmas and that's why i like fall into that content a little bit but like for instance when it comes to people that murder people i think it's a mental illness not always, but yeah. I think it is always. Really? Yes. I don't think it's a mental illness if you walk in on your wife and she's having sex with someone else. I, I, think, that's an, I, I think that's an evolutionary adaptation. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not, no, not that. I'm saying if somebody like mass murders people. Oh, talking about mass murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. But, but, I'm but, not but like that's a, an expression of a mental illness. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But but at the same time, here's, here's, here's my counter to that. Normal, well-adjusted 22-year-olds sure. who went to Da Nang in 1970... Mm -hmm and were under the command of US military officers and murdered Vietnamese civilians. So that's different. But but it is mass murder by normal individuals who were not suffering from mental, I'm not saying all of them weren't suffering from mental disorder, but if you have a unit of 150 men, the likelihood of all of them being psychopaths so is, is astronomically low. That's social conformity. That's yes. something completely different. It's, it's selective empathy. Yes, correct. Yeah, correct. like, so you, we could all in this room right now very much be trained to kill in a day. Sure. And we're we're over here like I would never kill anybody, but it, that could happen. And that's... I would certainly kill someone who was trying to hurt my mother. Okay, certainly, right. Certainly without any hesitation, murder some. I would kill someone who tried to hurt my mother. But yes. when you were in, in the military, right? Mm-hmm. Thank you for your service. Appreciate it. When that. you were in there. Did you ever... Basic training, though. Did you ever witness anybody that had a major psychosis... Um, early on, like basic training. There were, there were, so the thing is, because I was an Air Force officer, I, I saw some guys that I saw were, were suffering from either Asperger's or autism, and these guys worked in like finance or something like that. You and never they, saw like somebody have like a psychotic break, um, started saying weird shit about the president would probably be common in there. Again, so so I think what you're, it's a little different because I was an officer. I mean, an officer that's you way more- You still go through the training though. Yeah, but it's so- I was an officer and I was an Air Force officer. If I was, if you were saying Marine Corps boot camp, right? I definitely th we're talking about like full, yeah. metal, full metal jacket. Yeah. Yes, but the number of men who go through Marine Corps boot camp is like 100 times more than the number of people that go through Air Force officer training school. But so, even like Army, an Army, I would consider the bitch area. Like that's the no offense, it, it, sorry. It I dated a it, Marine. Yeah, well, so it it depends. Like it depends on what you're doing in the Army. Yeah. Right, but like I'm talking basic training. You you haven't even you're. You're just getting into camp, and mm -hmm. this is the first time someone's yelling at you. Like, yeah. that's usually when a break would happen. And like, sure. otherwise, yeah, sure. When you're in Okinawa, and maybe you're dealing with militia groups. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Like, I, I'm talking the very initial phase, because usually what will happen is parents, and this is my experience, because I used to speak at a lot of these workshops with families that have kids with schizophrenia and major psychosis, yeah. bipolar, whatever, and they would say. They could not get control of their kid. And so they're like, let's try putting them in the military. They were fine with it. They're like, sure. fuck it. I feel but like Do shit. you understand how the selection bias now, now because you're in trouble? Oh, yeah. No. I, or, yeah, or the yeah, number yeah. of people that were convicted of a, like a class A misdemeanor or a felony. And they had the choice in 1968 to say, you will either go to prison or go to Vietnam. And how many of them went to Vietnam? That's the reason why. I thought I, they drafted, though. They did draft. They did all these different things. Wait, I thought now. So now if you have a mental illness or you've been hospitalized on a 5150, you won't. 5150, yeah. Yeah. You won't um, have to be drafted ever, whatever. But in Vietnam, that wasn't a thing yet, right? Correct. That okay, was not a thing. got it. My dad was almost drafted, and we were talking about this yesterday, literally. <laughs> like, that's ironic. Yeah, we had, we had gotten to the point where we were sending so many troops, these are enlisted troops, out to Vietnam that, that we had a draft. And one of the ways to, like, abscond, like, not use as many people in the draft was to take violent individuals and then send them out to Vietnam. Yeah. That's what we were doing. Was it a great strategy? Probably well, not. But these people were saying, I would rather do this than go to jail. And that's what happened, especially in the late 60s, early 70s. Well, like, also a lot of. I will say this, anybody who's de developed psychosis or anything, it is very rare for them to be violent. I've personally dealt mm, with violent. I've personally dealt with violent. I've watched somebody go from like an all-star athlete every day to getting to the point where they wanted to kill all of us and it tried. Yeah. So, but they, in their head, 
because I was looking at like everything they wrote down on walls and shit. And it was like, if I don't kill them, they won't go to heaven, like save my family, like get this out of my family. Do you think it's a function of abuse or a genetic thing? I think it's genetic. And I'll tell you why. My mom was, uh, my mom was born in 1950. How old is she right now? She'd be 72. So she has dementia. She's had dementia since the last like eight years. But before that, she was she was diagnosed with um, schizoaffective disorder. Mm-hmm. So it's like bipolar and schizophrenia had a baby. Um, <laughs> and so she had my, I don't want to say who it is, but like, fuck, whatever. Had my brother or sister at four, 40 Wait, what was it in 1997 or 1998? How old was she? 98, she would have been... 38? No, 98, she would have been 48. No, no, no. Hold no, up. She's born in 50. Yeah. She yeah, you're right. She been 48 years old. My dad was 45 when he had me, and my mom was 36. Yeah. My brother is a year younger. I like hesitate because I don't really want to put that out there. He's a year younger. So I was like, we're 13 months apart, however mm-hmm. it works. I don't know. And my mom smoked cigarettes. She also, it was like kind of an accident. So we don't know if she was like on her medication that would have, would have been absolutely not allowed now. Mm. So, but growing up, totally normal, like most popular kid, most attractive. And then smoked weed, had cannabis induced psychosis that manifested as schizophrenia. And we were all stoners. I mean, it could have hit any, I used to smoke weed. It was equivalent to dropping acid. Yeah. I'll tell you, I've done both. And so looking back on it, I was like, I was, I could have probably developed it. Your neurology mm-hmm. was set up to where if you like took edibles or smoked marijuana, that you would have uh, a, a psychoactive effect. Something I heard Joe Rogan so talk it, about. It was like... Psychedelic uh, effect. It was, so I've never taken mushrooms, but the way that I hear about mushrooms and the way I hear about ketamine, which are totally different, it, it, it sounded the same when I smoked weed out of a bong. Mm. <laughs> Hi, Dad. But like, literally, I never touched it again after that because it was like a bad trip. That's yeah. the best way I can describe it. But yeah, so like when I talk about uh, free will, let's say, and I've seen what how somebody can go from never doing that or never saying racist slurs and then screaming at a window racist things. Yeah you see the development of it and you see that the way that they associate words with something like they could be saying a racial slur and it means purple. Like you, you watch and you try to understand it and you realize you can't. So I have a lot of empathy for things like Kanye's situation right now. Like everybody's freaking about what he said or whatever. I'm like, I have have empathy for Kanye's situation because he's suffering from a mental disorder. Absolutely. What I I don't have empathy for is the people who are now supporting this guy for what he's doing. I don't think they're supporting. Oh, a lot of people. No, a lot of people dropped it. Free. Yeah. No, no. Oh, Uh, the establishment. Yes. But there's a lot of rappers out there that are like, no, you're just saying he has a mental disorder because he's black or because you're trying to stop him from spreading this truth. Uh, No, that's where it gets harmful. Yeah, yeah. He's saying these words. No, he's I'm not saying he has a mental disorder. Kanye said he had a mental disorder. Yeah. You just chose to forget that he said that yeah. whole thing, right? And then the thing with Kyrie Irving. Oh, Kyrie Irving's being censored. No, Kyrie Irving, I'm going to just tell you right now, I believe he has a mental disorder. Who is the, that? He's a point guard for the Nets. And he came out, said very similar things. He had a, he had, yeah. he had sent, uh, he had a tweet that, w- that uh, went to an Amazon documentary, a documentary yeah. that was on Amazon that was about um, some very anti-Semitic things, basically insinuating that the Holocaust never happened. And then Joe Sai, who owned the Nets, was like, hey, man, you need to uh, like apologize for this because it's very hurtful to a lot of people. Yeah. And he did initially. And then he was like, no, I don't really need to apologize. Like his apology was not an apology. Uh, the thing is, this is the same Ky- Kyrie Irving who was on a podcast expressing that the earth was flat. The, I, so like there's a pattern. Yeah. Well, what, what I'm saying is Kanye West suffers from mental illness, too. Yeah. I'll just say that this is my opinion. I'm not a doctor. I believe if I if we were to actually diagnose him, we would find some. I believe he's a narcissist and a couple other problems that he has. I, I don't think he's a narcissist no, 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 at all. Ky- Kyrie Irving, not Kanye West. Oh, oh, Ky- sorry, sorry. Yeah, I think Kyrie Irving is. Um, Kyrie Irving in several. I mean, we could go into several things. He was playing with LeBron James. He's like LeBron James isn't a star. Oh, LeBron's not a star. Got it. 
Then he gets traded to Boston. He ruins the whole team, gets traded again away from Boston, yeah. goes to the Nets, and then they, they're booing him, and now he's flipping them off. Like, he wasn't the reason they dis- that, that he yeah. destroyed the team. Like This is like, this is this like is bro, bro crack to me right now. Like, I don't follow sports. Uh, just imagine, like, you go into someone's house, and yeah. you eat all their food, spend all their money, and I then f- they don't have any money, and then they kick you out of the house, and then you walk by their house, and you, fu- you tell them to go fuck themselves because they kicked you out even though you destroyed their house. Narcissism. Yeah. That's what Kyrie Irving did to the Boston Celtics. That's, what, that's my point. Got it. Um, so, so for me, for me, I, I see mental illness in both of them, and so for me, I do, I do feel empathy for both of them. Uh, or sympathy. I'm sorry, I feel sympathy for both. Illness of them. and personality disorders. I, I, I think it's a personality uh, disorder is an illness. You don't think it's an illness? Well, it's, mental illness. So here's how like doctors will di- yeah. differentiate. Like, yeah, personality disorder, you could argue it's a mental illness, but mental illness is something that can be treated with meds. You can't really treat personality. I think think a mood disorder you can treat with meds. A personality disorder you cannot, correct? Uh, Yeah, like you you can treat symptoms of it. So like a lot of people with BPD have anxiety. You can. You can treat, yes. But they'll give you like an antidepressant, not a doctor, but they don't, you have substance abuse. You have a more higher chance or higher rate of having substance abuse so like giving anxiety meds to somebody like it's it's not a good idea but they'll give you like an antidepressant i I don't think it's not a disorder because you can't treat it because you can't really treat hunting hunting disease either the 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 reason why i'm saying this is is like for instance sociopathy they differentiate them in the dsm but it's still an illness yeah yeah of course so so uh, for instance sociopathy there is this many treatments for sociopathy zero if you have a, a family member or parent who is a sociopath they're going to try to suck you in as much as they can help me help me help me yeah they there is no treatment yeah. they are never going to change they were born like this mm. it is the scorpion and the frog yeah it is a scor- like why did the scorpion bite the frog and kill both of them because i'm a fucking scorpion a sociopath yeah. is always going to be a sociopath yeah. one of the most unhealthy tropes i see in american culture is walter white and tony soprano and uh, Gregory House and Jack Bauer. This idea mm-hmm. of the sociopath who loves his daughter. That isn't fucking real. Yeah, and that's we, like an extension. Yes, but we're screwing up the public by making people believe that the sociopath is somehow redeemable. Dexter is the greatest example of this. The mm-hmm. sociopath with this moral code, he's the killer for good. No, he's a so, that is not how psychopaths work. And this, this is the yeah. problem that people have. And uh, like, I do believe that what's happened is people now d- deal with somebody who's evil in their life and they're like, no, this person's bad because they're evil and we need to just have empathy for them and try to help them out of this evil state. And they don't understand the difference between a shitty person and Ted Bundy. There's a difference. One yeah. of them cannot be redeemed. Yeah. It doesn't, like, I don't want to get into the religious or moral implications of this. We can get into the law aspect. I mean, legally, yeah. I think we I, can all agree. Like if somebody kills somebody that you don't do that, I don't care if you have a mental illness sure. or not. I'm not, I'm not saying mental illness is like, the reason I'm just saying like it makes it easier to understand but it's not forgivable so it's not that like my point is like if you kill somebody people will say you're evil right Mm, yeah and then there's the mentally ill but like what constitutes as evil that's where it like it messes me up but like in terms of legalities I mean it's somebody that commits an immoral act so let's speaking strictly from the the code of the legal code yeah did you know right from wrong? If you were aware, so for instance, you remember at the end of the Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, yeah, the yeah. show they did, they said, we want to sit sit there and say, get you off uh, by reason of insanity. And Jeffrey, he, he responds, he goes, no, I knew what I was doing. I yeah. knew what I was doing was wrong. I'm quite sane. And they're mm-hmm. like, well, no, you're not sane. You're eating people. It's like, no, I, but I knew I was eating people. Like I understood right from wrong. Yeah. Does that make sense? His sense of like what he wanted to do was completely off base. And in that case, you could say he had a mental illness, but like, the, the reality of the situation was like he, I, he knew right from wrong and therefore he should be tried as an adult and he was sentenced to 18 life or was it i can't remember 18 life uh, to life or was he no no given it, the, to, 18 life terms i believe i can't remember exactly yeah. what it was but yeah. here here's my question so the, a lot of people don't know what i'm about to tell you but i bet you probably know you know fucking everything okay so there's a thing with like capacity and competency they're Mm -hmm. pretty much the same thing competency is in law Mm -hmm. so is this person competent to stand trial yes does this person have capacity more so in a hospital they will not do the trial until you're deemed competent right yeah so you to get an insanity case through 
you would have like they're already deemed competent. It's a catch 22 is what I'm trying to say, yeah. because you're waiting until they understand their convictions or whatever, like whatever they're convicted for. And it's like, yeah, but did they have capacity at the time? Well, I mean, look at Hinckley, right? You know, the, John Hinckley, the guy who shot uh, Reagan Aaron Hernandez okay. is a good example. That's one I know. What, what do you think about he, him? Uh, he's an interesting case with the whole like brain development. He yeah. is a perfect example of how psychosis can manifest in like two different things, but how psychosis manifests and somebody can go from being like an all-star athlete to murdering their friend. So Aaron Hernandez, from what I understand, was always a piece of shit from the, from even when he was at Florida. I don't listen to what people say. Okay. I, but that, that's a long distance. That's a long flight away from committing murder. The, the thing, right. the thing about Aaron Hernandez is so there's the guy, the guy Webster, I forgot his first name. He played center for the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the situation with junior say shooting himself in the chest with shotgun so they yeah, could yeah, preserve yeah. his brain. Uh, and then you could make inferences about other people. So what it is, we don't know that Aaron Hernandez committed murder because of the the, the fact that he took on some severe head trauma when he was playing in the NFL. Absolutely. It, it, so, I mean, he, this guy got popped. Yeah. Um, we don't know. It could have been because of that. The reason why, though, we bring that up yeah. is because so many other athletes who had had received this. Yeah. You could say the same thing about Ray Carruth. You remember Ray Carruth uh, tries to ki uh, tries to kill his uh, baby's mama. Do you remember he hired someone to kill his baby's mama? No. Uh, it's a long time. It was twenty years ago. And that's the frontal part of your brain. It, that's decisions. So we don't know because, but like once we were talking about that level of head trauma, we don't know which part of the brain got damaged. But you see, that's when like the parents' input or like the family is so important. Like, was he showing signs? that his behavior was slipping. Was he slipping at sports? Like not like coordinated or just didn't show up, C cursed out the coach. That was one of my family members' sure. biggest things yeah. out of fucking nowhere. Like you, they look dead. You look at them and they have like the sociopathic stare. But at the end of the day, their version of reality is if I kill these people to save them, is it morally wrong? Well, if you lived as a Pleistocene, uh, Pleistocene homo sapien, uh, frequently you had to kill people to save your family. Frequently. Frequently but, you would. But I'm saying like if the person thinks that their reality is the right one mm -hmm. because they refuse meds, we can do that in this country. Okay. Nobody can force them. Whatever. If they think that what they're doing is right, like they're sacrificing us in order to go to the other planet because they think this sure, of course. This is like the thing. I know so so like that's that's where I'm all that's where I was like, well, are, are people evil? Because I thought he was possessed when I was into trick crack, okay? Mm, who? My relative. Aaron Hernandez. Oh, your My relative. relative. Your relative. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just saying, like, after watching that, I've just had a lot of moral questions to ask, and one of them happened to be the murdering thing. It's a iffy subject. I don't want people to think that I can't be like, yeah, that person's just a piece, piece of shit. Like, yes, I can do that, but I always think there's an element that goes back to that free will, goes back to that ancestral past of uh, their genes mutating. Schizophrenia is a very interesting one. Well, schizophrenia exists because it's a mutation, but it was never selected against. Was it maladaptive or adaptive? It doesn't matter because the, the, once we become, okay, once you be, once you Wait, belong, you, were, you were on it. Well, once we become the apex predator on the planet, there is no more evolutionary pressure. Therefore, schizophrenia in... And whoever yeah. it is, it's not selected against. It's maladaptive. Uh, it's maladaptive if you come from the from the belief that society is good and antisocial no, behavior is no, bad. No, no, it's maladaptive. Well, yeah, I guess because you're trying to. You're making. You have to make a moral out. judgment. Yeah. It is a. It is a. It is a random mutation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that was not selected against. I'll give you an example. Uh, I can't I'll remember which. I, I, give, I, I can't remember which disorder. But uh, Marilyn Monroe's grandmother, mother, and Marilyn Monroe uh -huh. all, for, all suffer from the same mental disorder. I want to say it's schizophrenia. I want to say it was schizoaffective. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember which one. The point I'm trying to make is those were all three very attractive women, and because they were physically attractive in a situation where they were not in a survival scenario, meaning like if you dated a woman who was super hot, but you were like trying to hide from the other tribes, and she was standing up in the middle of the night just spouting mm -hmm. out nonsense. She would not help your survival chances. Right. But you're dating Marilyn Monroe. You're you eat three squares of meals a day. You live in fucking you know like Joe DiMaggio when he when he was dating her, or fucking yeah. Frank Sinatra when he was dating her, or, or RFK when he was dating her. So in, in one of these situations, she's so beautiful, and we're not in a survival scenario. So her schizophrenia is not select. There's no selection pressure against it. Do you understand? Yeah. And so now what happens is. If she was a man and she was homeless, oh, and I'm she, gonna prove you and, wrong, and, and baby. If she was a man and she was homeless, 
And now, um, if she was a man and she was rich or super yeah. good looking or a movie star, it's mm -hmm. different. But if she was a man and homeless and not that attractive, mm -hmm. she would not be able to pass along those genes. Bullshit. Re okay, how? Okay, so I'm gonna, number one, that gene in general, it's more predominantly in males. Okay. So. But you, but you, you but have an X I, chromosome. You have an X listen, chromosome. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah. I'm going to say you're, you have the right thought process. People yeah. wouldn't pick up on that, but I'm going to literally blow your mind. I okay. Think. Okay. So how would you distinguish somebody who hears voices to somebody that like, that's a shaman that was very well respected in a community what, what, back what, in the day? So it depends on what year, like when, what are we talking Okay. About? We're going back thousands of years. If you had a, a shaman who's people know he's the doctor, mm -hmm. he does yeah. all this stuff. He's the one one that hears voices like God or okay, whatever. Sure, yeah. How do you differentiate that from somebody who also says that and says they're the Messiah? In the, in the case with mm -hmm. the shaman, generally he's going to take psychedelics in order to hear those hold voices. Hold on, hold on. Uh, you don't know that. Not back in the day. But you, you don't not think necessary. shamans really would take... But it's, it goes about timing. Okay. So some of you have schizophrenia. The voices don't stop, baby. They're mm -hmm. going. Got it. But a shaman might be a little... Uh, weird, and then hear them at certain times. So they did a study. So the shaman may choose to hear them. Maybe, yeah. but they did a study. You'll see what I mean. Okay, uh, like it. they did a study um, back in, I want to say, I don't like pulling studies from like the 90s, but they, sure, re you should. they replicated it. So I know it's a good one. Yeah. So they went around the entire world and got um, 70,000 schizophrenic or families with one relative, son, daughter, whatever, with schizophrenia, and they interviewed everybody, and they found that in every single instance, there was somebody in the family that was a little odd, mm. um, probably like schizotypal disorder or whatever, mm. which yeah, that could yeah. that could manifest as schizophrenia, but it's very loose. It's it's like like if you look at my family, I could be into UFOs. I could maybe hear voices or something like a little odd, but not to the extent, right? So shamans possess that gene in them. They have a little weirdness to them, but that gene from the schizophrenic will pass down. So because people want to sleep with the shaman, he's probably the alpha dude. Think about it. Back in the day, okay. he's... That's oh, how so that he, he's, gene He's more likely going. to reproduce. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I think in those cases, but but in this case, what you're saying is his schizophrenia is a productive a part of his society because he's a shaman. It's, it's maladaptive because it's it's a way to, well, in my How's opinion. How's it maladaptive? Because he, he, he has a high status in his, in his group. Because you have to question, is God real? That's why. And that's like that conversation. I think for the individual shaman who's getting laid, I don't think it's maladaptive. The trait is maladaptive. So okay. he, the like trait that, so they all had the similar traits. The one with schizophrenia, it expressed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The brother maybe didn't have it expressed fully, but there's a little, little bit of it and it presents a schizotypal. So it's, it's a recessive a, allele. Yeah, yeah, you could say, I, yeah. maybe, maybe that's what it is. But because he has not only that trait, and women like him because of it, honestly, it's chick crack. Yeah. But because he also has that in his family, that's why when he reproduces to all his harems, harems yeah. of bitches, yeah. that gene keeps going through yeah, evolution. But I, so, so then I would disagree that it's maladaptive. If it is a thing that is causing you to have sex with more women sure. because it makes you more interesting, then it's not maladaptive. But how is that gene itself is not adaptive to evolution? What do you mean? Why not? It gets you laid. Of course so, it's adaptive. Uh, me, okay. No, not probably not. Like n adaptive would be something like, um, like I disagree with a lot of people that say height because height would actually get you seen by a predator. Sure. So actually, shorter men were the adaptive trait. They were the ones that were faster. They they produced more resources. So to me, that's adaptive on survival. Remember how you were talking about survival in the beginning? To get bitches, I don't know if that would be the same thing. Maybe, but that would be implying the shaman's lying, and I don't think he is. Some shamans, I think, are lying. Some shamans are probably seeing, hearing voices. I don't know. They're they're probably just a little odd and hear the wind a little bit differently. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, my my whole point is, and I talked to Doctor Buss about this. There are a few a few uh, biological adaptations that have happened since the agricultural revolution. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, 
um, lactose intolerance. Testosterone. Uh, there's there's right. a few. There's a few. Yeah, yeah, that could be one. There's a few Sherpas that live up in the mountains that have produced more red blood cells than their than yeah. their ancestors. Yeah. Uh, there's a case where humans are able to digest gluten more effectively than they were before the agricultural mm -hmm. revolution and myopia. Those are, uh, there's a few. And something with sickle cell, I think. So, so sickle cell was one, but I don't know necessarily that, I think that may have existed before uh, the agricultural revolution. Probably. Uh, sickle cell, the idea of sickle cell anemia being, uh, uh, creating an immunity to malaria. Yeah. That, that, that's yeah. what you're talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So possibly, but, but malaria might have been more common before the agricultural revolution. I don't know. That honestly. They use the malaria example with the exam the schizophrenia one that I'm talking about. Yeah. So I don't know. Interesting. Okay. Let's talk about this because we, we <laughs> this is not red pill. We were, on, we're, we're on the topic. That for was a long interesting time. though. Yes. I'd love, we can talk about this. We'll, we'll talk Thank about God this. you're smart. Am I? Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank Cause you. I only have a little bit. I'm just like, Oh, hopefully he'll understand where I'm getting. Yeah, we're doing definitely. Uh, here's, here's the thing. So th this is one thing I am not, a, I do not specialize in and you and Rolo talk about this frequently. And this is the con, the, I know what you're gonna the say. concept of the 1950s, the birth control pill and feminism. I oh. do. I don't know as much about this oh, as you okay. guys do and how the birth control pill changed. I do understand to a certain extent, the idea of, of the welfare state causing mm -hmm. women to be paid essentially to not have fathers in the household that I do and have seen personally with my own eyes yeah. growing up during a crack epidemic in East Dallas, in Dallas, Texas, back oh, in the yeah. 1990s, personally with my own eyes, seeing families rewarded there. to not have the father in the house. I have seen that, okay. but the idea of the birth control pill, um, and changing women's hormones and co creating the situation that we're in now. So it's multifaceted. You got time? Yep. Okay. Um, so you don't, okay. Repeat the first part. You don't agree that the birth control. No, no, no. Pill it's not, I don't agree. I don't specialize in this. I don't okay. understand this. So, cause you understand the birth control yeah. pill does not fit in evolutionary psychology. It was it didn't exist. It is not an right. ancestral it's, thing. It's literally, and, it goes against everything and, we know. Well, it doesn't go against. It yeah, just, it it's just, it's just a new thing. You got to fit into the equation. But I, I want you to think about it like this. You don't understand when women have the apprehension the first time they have sexual intercourse with a guy, right? Yeah. You understand that? And that comes from an ancestral past where if you had in sexual intercourse with the wrong guy, you would have a baby with the wrong guy and you'd be ostracized from the tribe. And this was a death sentence. Sentence. Does that make sense? So, but your yeah. your your conscious has no con, uh, comprehension of contraceptives. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So even though you cognitively know you will not have a baby with this guy, mm -hmm. you still feel the apprehension. Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? That is a maladapt, not maladaption, but it's a mis um, uh, misadapt. I can't remember what the it's, word is. Evolutionary mismatch. That's is that what that's yeah, it's called, okay. It's yeah, called got evolutionary. It. It's evolutionary mismatch. Yeah. So in that in this case, I'm not I'm not encouraging women to go have sex with a bunch right. of dudes. I'm just telling you that's where it comes from. Yeah. By the way, men out there, when you have approach anxiety, it's for the same reason. If yeah. you say the wrong thing yeah. to the wrong woman, there's only 150 people in your tribe, maybe six females that you possibly could have children with. If you uh, fuck yeah. up in front of them, you, you die. Trip, you die. You, but it's not that you die. You just never get to breed, right? Oh, uh, about 25% yeah. of men who've ever lived have had uh, who've yeah. had sex. Mm -hmm any sex. So that's the reason why that for, uh, approach anxiety comes from. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is the birth control pill now takes that the one of the purposes for that apprehension of like, mm -hmm. well, I can kind of just fuck anyone I want and I'll be okay. That whole thing happens and you but you're also and that that part I understood. But mm -hmm. you're you and Rollo extrapolate to another point where it's like now it's changing your hormones and now it's actually causing you to be to desirous of beta males. Yeah. Go into that. That's what yeah. that's what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, don't, I don't disagree with any so, of it. I just don't know it. The whole concept, uh, I'm going to break down your thinking a little bit. The whole concept that the birth control pill and like once it was introduced, women could just F whoever. It's not true. Women were like, the, you got to condition them to be hoes. Mm -hmm. That comes later. But so when it's first introduced, originally, I think it started in 1940s in Puerto Rico they were overpopulated there and so they wanted to sterilize all the women but they were having an issue with like the F ethics of it because you can't just like sterilize a bitch without her knowledge you know so they're like trying to come up with this pill during that time they introduced the, well, that's it. what the tuskegee experiments were trying to do mm -hmm. they were trying to sterilize black men anyway go, yeah. go ahead yeah so what they did was they couldn't at the time come up with a way that women would choose to be on like the trials clinical trials because like they didn't know what it could do so what they would do is if you had too many kids they would literally go door to door and offer you this pill like they're gonna plan on sterilizing you but if you don't want that to happen take this pill you're barely gonna have side effects you'll be fine and so they developed the biggest birth control like human experiment pretty much and then once they realized it was like not that many 
the, at one point it was too high of a dosage. So women were coming in with like vomiting, like horrible, the shit we complain about now, but like on a way higher scale. So they brought it to the U S and they started using it to, and I have a little bit of a conspiracy that it's treat, used to treat certain disorders. I really want to question that because that kind of goes into the whole indoctrination. I'm like, what if they're just trying to get them to associate this pill with other things? But that's just my conspiratorial side. So anyways, the birth control pill, they were on it, whatever. And then when it came to, if you look at the stats on marriage, after the birth control pill was introduced, that's baby boomers, right? When there was that spike mm -hmm. and it was shotgun weddings. Uh, it's, it, well, it's not just shotgun weddings. What happened well, was all these people had come back from World War yeah. uh, II and mm -hmm. that you had all these men had come back and then all of a sudden we had this industrialized economy right. and, and we had an explosion of, uh, of jobs, yeah. right? We had a, a, the economy grew and then the, these, these people who yeah. started living out in suburbs started having more children. So... The way that they came back from war, suddenly it's te technologically advanced, is equivalent to us in this moment not knowing how to fix society. You see what I'm saying? So back then, when they're taking this birth control, when they have this birth control pill, they're off of it, there's the baby, or I'm sorry, they get pregnant, they have these shotgun weddings or whatever. I'm trying to show the how it's like old order thinking and new order. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, oh, I guess we'll get married, but it's so quick. It's not normally like that. So yeah. that was the beginning of women like starting to, how do I put it? It's like starting to see a difference in their sexual strategy and their behavior. But you don't really see a change until like, I want to say probably when was Gloria Steinman? It was like all over the news, like 73. How old is she? I don't know. She's 50. No, she's not 58. She was 58 in 1995. How old was she in the 70s? Uh, 30. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So when she was, um, when that whole movement came about, they were trying to get more women into the workforce, like you said, after World War II, too. So there was that. And then I guess there... So like my understanding from all of this is that the birth control pill tricks you into thinking you're pregnant. I know we're jumping, but you'll understand yeah. what I'm saying. I talk like that. Like it tricks you into thinking you're pregnant. What do we know about women that seek beta feminine guys? They do it when they're pregnant. They, they want the guy that's it shows them they're going to stay. This is what dad bod is. This is dad yeah. bod is a symptom of what you're talking about. Yeah. Or, or I'm sorry, women's this dad bod myth or this thing where women pretend like they're more sexually attracted to to men who have dad bods when they're not. They're more not. Sorry, they're not. Well, they find that, it more comfortable, but they're not sexually attracted to dad. Bods. I also think that's sort of like fat positivity movement trying to keep men that's at part, their level because they don't want to feel. But, ugly. but it's but it's also when you look, <laughs> when you look at the dad bod, it's always the movie star that has a dad bod. So yeah. he already had Vince Seth Vaughn, Rogen. Yeah, Seth Rogen. He already has the status. Yeah. And so now we're going we're gonna to increase mm. his prolactin levels so that he increases yeah. his body fat. And then evolutionarily, the woman looks at it like, oh, he is in this with me. He's going to stay up and, and ra help me raise the children at yeah. night. Therefore, him sticking around to help me raise this child is attractive to me. Yeah. That, but that's... But it gets really, really complicated. So I'm, uh, I'm going to just run through it and then you pull from it. Sure. Before I forget. So they... they the pill tricks them into thinking they're pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. So then when they're going through their cycle just normally, it's still a little bit like feminine. They're going for the feminine dudes, maybe not to that extent. There might be one period, arguably, I think it's stunted. Rolo doesn't. And it's that ovulatory shift or that ovulatory period. Hoop earrings, red dress. She's going to fuck somebody on girls night out. You know what I'm saying? But this is yeah, under I the in Las Vegas. I'm yeah, very yeah, aware. Yeah. yeah. So, but this is still under the pill. So now I want you to put that in one category. Now you have your woman in the early mid fifties before the birth control pill was really like in the U.S., which was the sixties. So you have women that have no hormonal changes, right? Yeah. Who do you think they're going for? There's no birth control pill involved. They're going for the alpha dude. Sure, yeah. For sure. And then when they, let's say, get pregnant by them, they're going to lock those guys down. But obviously back then they weren't really doing that. They would like marry first and then have kids. But then, so you have that version. So back then it was not altered. It was the way it should be. Women would go for the best mate and then 
when she would get pregnant, his testosterone would drop. Yes. You know this through evolutionary mm -hmm. psychology. So the men didn't kill the babies. They would crush them or whatever. So there's that. But then on the birth control pill, what happens is, let's say they want to get pregnant and she's got a beta motherfucker in her home. She doesn't know this yet, but she's not going to like him. They, this is now a side effect on birth control that they're, it's all over like TikTok and shit. And so what it is, is if you get off the pill to try to get pregnant, you might not like him anymore. Oh, wow. Okay. Now I totally understand. Yeah. So just to reiterate. Like a, repulsed. A woman, a woman is on birth control. Yes. Because it, uh. It, uh, what exactly does it do? Does it give you more estrogen or less estrogen? Reduces so the amount of estrogen? It depends on which one you're on, but it'll it'll level them out. So okay. people would take them if they have like a lower estrogen. Got it. It, I don't think it makes them spike, okay. like some people like to say. Whatever physiological, re whatever pharmacological reasons, the birth control pill makes you desirous or more tolerant of a beta male. It changes your sense of smell. Okay, yeah, okay, well, that actually makes sense because we've gone over smell actually. Yeah. M women can smell when men are more testosterone. Uh, more testosterone. You've seen like the white t shirt. Yeah, these white, these white t shirt tests are in the, uh, I believe they're in the book, The Evolution of Desire. They you can did, read, read about that. They did one on this birth control pill. Yeah. I can't quote it, but it, it shows that women would still, even on birth control, go for the betas. They're smelling yeah. the betas. And so, then you're asking yourself, why are divorces happening? Yeah. We all have our theories that it's like the woman wow. is okay. not so attracted to it. You think, you think divorces him. are happening because these women are tolerant of beta males while they're on birth control. When well, they get like, off birth control, now they want alpha males and their current beta male partner disgusts them. Think about it. Think about it. How? Uh, okay. So That's a theory. There's no, I don't see a hole in that theory. Yeah. Right. So theory by definition is supported by facts. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just drawing. I'm not connecting dots. Yeah. Only to myself, don't take what I say. But like, there's a part that I left out and it's, so when women get married, arguably in this century or in this day and age from 80s to now, how often do you think they got off of the birth control just to take a break? I don't know. I would have no idea. Think about it. Get off the birth control? Yeah, you think once they're prescribed for acne, for well, they, whatever. They never get off it. Is that what Almost saying? never. Okay. Almost, and most women don't even realize that half of their uh, anxiety and depression is caused from it. It's sad. Some women do. I do know some, some women. Some women yeah. will notice because they're really sensitive. That's why they used to test these uh, drugs on men because men could tolerate it. Women couldn't. We were, were very sensitive to drugs. But anyway, so women would then... So women back then maybe didn't get off of it. Now they're certainly not. So they're going their whole dating history for looking for these feminine dudes. Interesting. The women that aren't are the women that, see, this is where that whole, like, does it dim it a little bit? Because then you see the women that are like, fuck this dude, he won't call me back. So what do we call him? I don't think it's an alpha dude. I think it's actually a beta disguised as an alpha. This is Rolo talks about children with dynamite, you know, that concept. It's like when you teach game to guys that like you tell them to be mean to women, they do it, they know it works and they're like, whoa, they're still betas. Yeah. They're still fucking betas because they're doing everything for the woman. They realize the tactic that works, but they're not the real deal. Yeah. So that's my whole thing is like, I, I think one of the problems is like women are dating these guys that not even biologically do they want. They repulsify them once they get off of the pill. So I don't know. That's great. I don't think I, I know that was a lot, but I don't like see, I don't see a hole in that. The problem here's here's a couple of issues. The divorce thing. No, no. The, the, one of the issues is now how do we test for that scientifically? But they have. No, no, they have. Yeah. You're talking about the, the shirts. Like, be, not just the shirts. Like, are no. Why is that? Is that is there a correlation to divorce? Is what I'm asking. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, I jumped. Here's the reason why you're gonna have an issue with that is because now you, you have to legitimately in a scientific text admit that there are alpha and beta males, and that's so that's so anti. Uh, you know, the, the scientific narrative, the idea that men, can, even though we use taxonomy yeah. on elephant bull seals and, and, and you know, gorillas, yeah. apparently we can't use them on homo sapiens, even though we're in the same uh, category. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I would be curious to see if somebody would I'm be gonna willing to I'm going to blow your mind it. again, I What's think. That? Okay. So women, so I didn't tell you about this, but when I was working as a bartender, 
I was learning game without knowing it was game. I have of this course, huge when you're a bartender, yeah. But I have this huge binder of field reports. Okay. So we would like write out what the guy looked like. He would give me his ID. I'd be like six feet tall, whatever. Yeah. I'd be like six out of ten. I didn't know anything about the PUA community. And then Wait, you and the other bartenders were rating dudes? No, just me. Uh, okay. Just me. I'd like I they're like, how do I get that girl over there? I'm like, say no more. Yeah. Like go up to them and ask them their astrology sign so this is like my passion is game and i know never take fish advice from a fish get it from the fisherman i get that i get that whole thing but this is where i find that you can actually solve something if you fuck it up later whatever but anyway so we would get i have over 500 women and 500 men i'm having it put into like an excel spreadsheet mm -hmm. and we're checking the validity of it like is there a lot of inconsistencies or not and at the end of this like whole thing like they would go up to them like do you want to go out with me we track their responses but then at the end of it i was like i wonder if their period has anything to do with it so i'd ask them do do they have a tampon they're like oh no i just had my period last week write it down and you know what we found like or i found was literally women a week before their period yeah, i was gonna say this this is if you asked me this is what i was gonna answer yes yeah it, like a week before their period would go for the those tall guys yes. go for those horny week yeah the mm -hmm. horny week the ovulatory shift and then um if it was unclear when she like i would be like when when was their, your last period they'd be like why are you asking me this but uh, eventually you make it not weird and i found that if it was two weeks after her period. <laughs> I know it's funny, but like there, this is no scientific. It's not basis, funny because I know PUAs that were tracking women's ovulatory cycles. Yeah. Were they? Yes. No way. hundred percent. I, I saw the calendar myself. Well, like I picked up on the fact that women would say they want one thing, but go for the other guy, how we were talking about that earlier. But like when you're a bartender, you can see somebody and know exactly what they're going to order. Like we're fortune tellers. We're those people. We could like guess your age. We could do anything, but like, that's from repetition and seeing it. And I would see this repetition of a specific woman, AKA your basic ass bitch, vodka, soda, splash of crayon, extra lime, that bitch, the, you know what I mean? And they would say that they want like a six foot tall, dark, tall, dark, and handsome. And they're going for the short guy yeah. of another race. So when they would say tall, dark, and handsome, they were talking like Italian or Slavic or something from my experience. Yeah. They would go for the shorter black guy. And I'm like, why is that? It's because he had game. Sure. I, and that's when I was figuring Agreed. out. Agreed, yeah. But the period, dude. So I'm really big on this whole birth control thing because I really think it's like changing the way that women are mating. Mm. They're repulsed by their partners. That's why they don't want to fuck them if they're married. Think about it. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying it's possible. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you would just at that point want to try to disprove your own hypothesis. But I, that does I seem like a... I would need to have it controlled. It seemed like a credible theory. I, yeah. I definitely can see that as a theory. By the way, I can tell you that there's some cases unequivocally mm -hmm. that there is divorce because of what you said, but is that why all divorce or why there's an epidemic of divorce? I don't know, but that I, I, I promise you. What's the number one reason for divorce? Uh, number one reason for divorce is, um, Finan I mean, finances, is fi something yeah, fi about yeah, that. Yeah. We could say that it's women out earning their husband if you want to go red pill, but sure. just finances yeah, okay. in general. Why do you think what 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 kind of dynamics could happen if finances are an issue? Who makes up most of the consumer reports? Uh, you talking about women outspending men? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just asking. Yeah. So okay, maybe women. Okay, whatever. There's things that I'm not saying that like their dynamics are necessarily scientific statistical answers, but I'm saying there there's a lot of data out there that could show that. Something with finances, something with maybe the woman out earns. She doesn't respect him. I know you can't test for that. But like if she doesn't respect him, that's hormones, dude. Yeah. Like that's what I, I don't even think they would know that that's why. Of course. Yeah. So I don't know. That's my theory. And Thank then, you. And then her response is we grew apart. <laughs> that's my favorite one is we grew apart. Not happy is my favorite yeah. one as yeah. if they ever are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, okay. Listen, I, was, I, I want to skip ahead here because so I'm new to this whole space really yeah i'm i've like i mean i read the red pill a long time ago but i read <laughs> i read the rational mail a long time ago yeah um 
I'm new to the YouTube space. Oh, okay. And so constantly I'm being asked to go on people's podcasts and they're like, do you, do you not know who I am? And I'm like, I, I don't know who you are and I feel really? like shit. So maybe you can help me. So Rolo gave me a bunch of names and he said, what's your two to three word impression of these people? So, oh my God. And I, Give me more than two to three words, okay? We're going to go through each one of these people and you just kind of give me your impression. Was that cool? Yeah, to, to help me. So, cause I'm, are I'm, you lying to me? You're tricking me 100%, right now. 100%. You think real. I can't tell? Uh, this is serious. I should show you the text message from Rolo. Okay. I'm saying I don't think it's real that those people that he's listing asked you to do a podcast, but let's go. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, Adam Sosnick. I'm going on his podcast oh, okay. on the 8th. So uh, what, <laughs> what, is your, what is your impression of Adam Sosnick? I love Adam Sosnick. Yeah? He's, he's, he's going to try to get you on. He's sneaky. He's mm -hmm. going to get you on with somebody. Yeah, he's, he, so we're doing two shows. We're doing mm -hmm. one with just me and him and one where we got a panel. Okay. He's going to get me on with some Did girls. he tell you what the panel's about? No, I mean, but I, I'm not new. I'm not in the YouTube community enough to have beef with anyone. Okay. So there's nobody he would have. No, it, it's not I, that. Unless he's going to have like that, that loon, no, I'm not going to say the guy's name, the one in Brazil. I'm not, unless he's going to have him, I'm, I'm not, there's no way, there, there's nobody I have okay. beef with. Now, there might be some people that have a serious problem with my whole like game is pre-selection strategy that yeah. I have. A lot of people may have the idea because what does that mean? That means that, oh, you treat women like human beings. Yeah, I do. And yeah. that's the reason why- They, can't, they that, can't get on that's board. A, that's the reason why I have 50 girls show up. It's like, the, the thing that makes them mad is not me saying I have female friends. The thing that makes them mad is that I say I have female friends and then I'm dating playmates. That drives them fucking crazy. Men and women can't be friends. Exactly. And then when I do this, I'm like, I, and then- It's industry too. Yeah, they but, don't get it. But here's, here's the other thing. It's like, I agree with you. Most men can't be friends with women because they don't have enough abundance. Yeah. If you have a ton of abundance, you can't. If you are the manager of a strip club and there are girls, mm -hmm. house moms and girls in the strip in the strip club who are helping you like like put the whole thing together, yeah. you need them as allies. And if you're me and I'm trying to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for animal rescue yeah. and Lindsay Payla shows up and she's like, I will support you, Michael. I will help you raise this money for animal yeah. rescue. And Kylie Myers does it the same thing. Last time I checked, someone who's coming to help me raise money for a charity I care about, that would be my friend. That's yeah. the way I look at it. Yeah. Maybe you don't see it that way. No, but that, I, do. I yeah. do. I talk about this in the Red Bill. I actually, in one of your shows that you did with Rolo, I was in the chat and I was like, yeah, he's explaining something that only industry people get. Like yes. if you're in the nightlife, it's a it, and people desire to be in this industry like you yeah. don't even oh believe. Oh my god, it's crazy. You could be a VIP host and a guy will have mad respect. Yeah. And we know how that is. Yeah. Like you know, sometimes whatever. I always poke fun at them. But like you're you go and do promos with these girls. You see them at their fucking worst, dude. Yeah. You see them crying over their boyfriend. You're like, bitch, throw her over your yeah, shoulder. We definitely. gotta get to the next place. So you have a different paradigm than them. They can't even imagine yeah. that. So it's different. Yeah. I, so it's, yeah. It's also like I, I'm in a really messed up situation. I have an animal I have to put down. I don't know when. Oh my god. Uh you know, total kidney failure. And you know, there were some females in animal rescue mm -hmm. and I contacted them and they said, here's what you're going to do. Here's what you're going to do. Here's what you're going to do. That sounds like a friend to me. Right. Yeah. And, and I need, I, I'm putting down this animal that I love very much. I, I know some dudes are like, Oh, just be a man. And just don't no, man. This is hard. This is a yeah. difficult fucking thing. And having someone to, to walk me through the steps yeah. of how to keep this animal alive for as long as I can. And then to just uh, d to deal with the situation and before I have to put this, this animal down that I love very much, it's hard. And yeah. so this idea that I, these people are my friends. Also, let me tell you one other thing. When I was dealing with a woman that I was dating and she was doing some, some shysty shit, it was the girls who came to me and told me, this is the shysty shit, this is the shysty shit. That sounds like a friend to me. That sounds like a friend to me. That's all I'm saying. Well, they might be trying to sabotage her. They want to get rid no, of they her. Were, no, no, they were not trying to sabotage her. They loved her. And that they were shocked as shocked as me. In fact, they were waiting to tell me because they couldn't believe what the, the shit they were saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is... That's an ally. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. An ally. So if I say ally... Because when, well, when I say female friends, these fucking red pill dudes, they're fucking... I know. Their booty holes get tight and their teeth, they gnash I their know. teeth. They're like, no, you can't be friends with them. Have you ever been friend zoned? Oh uh, yeah, but in my 20s, but it never happens now. Exactly. No, but that's why you it hurts. You could fuck these women. Yeah. That's the difference. You can say this. I can't say this, but yes, you're correct. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you could fuck them. That's the difference. Yeah. Guys can't even... I'm always like, just work hard in your 20s. You'll get your fucking harem. Just like, stop I'm, I'm bitching, just, well, okay, you know? So, so let's say a hypothetical guy who hypothetically lived in Las Vegas and hypothetically had 100 female friends and hypothetically he could sleep with most of them. The reality is like he what you said. He, he, no, but at one point he can't just keep... He can't sleep with all of them. Like, yeah, it, and, then it, and then it gets weird maybe a little bit if you've... Like, cause women don't like to know you, f you fucked everybody in the, in the area, the yeah, vicinity. For sure. So it's like, 
but you could. You could. It's you, like it wouldn't you, you stop could say, you. You could say that. I'm yeah. not going to say that out loud. Yeah. Okay, so so here's the, the so first off, who's the next one? Adam Sosnick, and you. You say, should do it. I'm um, definitely. We already. Ordered. I think I think you would give a very interesting perspective, no matter who comes on. Beautiful. Yeah. Des- Destiny. Destiny. Uh, Destiny's interesting to me. Uh, I don't. Why? Like, uh, I I think he arcu- articulates his arguments really well. He, he's somebody in the debating streamer area, and his main focus is to de-radicalize. So really mm, extreme sides, either or, and he brings them together. And I actually think that's really conducive, in my opinion, to yeah. society. So I, a lot of people like to throw shade at him. I've thrown, I've called him a beta cuck, a beta chump, whatever. But I mean, I, I think he makes really interesting content. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Alex from PFW, PWF. Alex, it, Alex has been really good to me. I didn't yeah. like him in the beginning. We've gone head to head. Oh, I met him. Yeah, I met him in uh, Miami. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. He's a genuine guy. Like, when you get to know him, like, off camera and stuff, like, he, like, checks in on you. I think that's valuable yeah, to agree. have. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a hypothesis here. Alex is a good dude who got pulled in a certain direction by yep. a certain lunatic that lives in Brazil. And now you see, yeah, That's, I think so too. And, and I and I think it, it caused him to alienate himself from certain individuals that he didn't need to alienate himself. I from. I think he was pretty neutral about like working. He'll he'll work with whoever or whatever, but when you start out in like an area where most people make the expose videos, I mean, how could how could it go wrong? Yeah, but how could yeah. it go right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, I wouldn't want to be a like part of just, anybody you're just that does yourself that. Off. Like this is why I have a lot of respect for um, uh, Spencer Cornelia. Do you know who he is? Yeah. He, okay. So Spencer was on here about a month ago. Really? And uh, yeah, he lives here in Vegas. So, so so Spencer was on here, and we were having a conversation about this. And one of the things that, that separates him from, like, say, the, the lunatic in Brazil, or the uh, what's the guy's name? Um, uh, oh gosh, the the, the the one with the, the one in Canada with the long hair who who just bashes on everyone. I can't remember what Philion, Philon, Philon. Oh, Philion. Philion, yeah. He lives in New York. Yeah, wherever. The, Are uh, you sure that's who you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, whatever his name is. The point, the, the, <laughs> the, the deal with that dude is that like he comes from a place of like he just hates. Like he really ne- needs. You think so? A hundred percent. Yeah. He has two sisters. Yeah, but my point he is, reminds- he, but he says things that are abjectly false. In what his, does he say? Oh man, some of the stuff he said about Justin Waller isn't true. Some of oh, stuff he, I didn't know he yeah, made a video. Yeah, on some of the Justin. stuff he says about Andrew Tate just abjectly isn't true, and um, almost everything he said about Dan Bilzerian is provably. I not didn't true. see those. Yeah, so like he's doing these things for for just like comes out of a place of hate where Spencer Cornelia does not at all. Yeah. Spencer Cornelia researches every single thing he does. And so that's why I appreciated him more yeah. and becomes friends with a lot of the guys he does exposés on and has had his mind changed before because he's, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. See, I like people that are open yeah. to change their opinion. Like, um, uh, what do you call it? Good faith debates. Yeah. Like uh, anything else. I'm just like checked out. I'll yeah. just ca- keep calling you a cock. Uh, Myron Gaines. <laughs> I respect Myron Gaines. Yeah. I respect his work ethic. He's always been good to me. Yeah. Um, tall. Is he? Fucking tall. Is he? Yeah. yeah. He works really hard. Underrated. He He's going to be viewed as the... I say this all the time. He's he's right now a villain, but he's going to be viewed a hero in like 20 years I, from I, women. I think in 20 years there won't be a difference. What do you mean? I don't think so. This is one of the discussions I had. I wonder uh, this one news media organization interviewed me about the the influencer economy, and they're like, "What's the difference between being famous and infamous?" And I was like, "Last time I checked, a man transitioned to a woman, got into an SUV, probably drunk, with an ATV strapped to the behind, behind it, mm-hmm. crashed into somebody, threw him into oncoming traffic, killed them, then ran into another person right afterwards, and then was named Woman of the Year four months later." There is no difference between fame and infamy. Uh, last time I checked, there was a dude who did a bunch of quaaludes, robbed a bunch of people with mm-hmm. penny stocks, d- slept with hundreds of prostitutes, went to jail for 15 months, got out, and now he now he's on Fox News, yeah. The Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Last time I checked, your president, your former president, fucked a porn star while his wife was pregnant, and you still elected him. Last time I checked, the current president was saying he doesn't want to send his children to, uh, to public school with all the monkeys in the jungle. Last time I checked... There is no difference between being famous and infamous. Last time I checked, that dude, Mark Furman, who found the bloody glove at the OJ scene, later on, do you remember he, he used the N-word like 27 times in this, really? uh, this other recording they had? And they made him a fucking correspondent on Fox News. And last time I checked. Joe Rogan. Uh, what do you mean? Remember when he got clipped into... With the N-word? Yeah. But I, 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 it was I, the, 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 the thing with Joe Rogan is, 
Nobody believes he was saying that out of racism. No one thinks that he was saying making those statements. No. So many black comedians came out in favor of him afterwards. Yeah, see, a lot of people, though, are moving like it's still not okay. No, but no, I know no, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But he, 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 he doesn't quite meet the criteria of what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, again, go back to, uh, uh, do you remember Colonel Oliver North during the Iran-Contra affair? He basically took the blame for what, oh, uh, yeah. for, for, during the yeah, Reagan yeah. administration. He's a correspondent on, like, like I, I believe he retired uh, with an honorable discharge, and then he became a correspondent for Fox News. Yeah. There is no difference between being famous and infamous. It doesn't exist anymore. It, like, there, there used to be in the 80s a difference between the Iron Sheik and Hulk Hogan. There used to be a difference between Gorbachev and Reagan. Mm -hmm. Now they're the same. Now yeah. it's just like, like again, Logan Paul was the bad guy, then Logan Paul's the good guy, then Jake Paul's the good guy, then Jake Paul's the bad guy, then Andrew Tate is the bad guy, then Andrew Tate's the good guy. Like it just—I don't think Myron did anything wrong. No, no, I, no, that's not what I'm. Oh, okay. Like, I'm my, on, my point is, yeah. you're saying in 20 years he he's now the villain, and then will become the hero. And I'm telling you, I think in 20 years there won't be a difference. Oh, between. what I'm I telling get you is in Sorry, 20 I'm years stupid. the difference between fame and infamy because status is status is status. There won't be different kinds of status. There will just be: are you more famous or less famous? I mean, he's right now viewed as a villain mm -hmm. from women. Sure. So, and like Tate, you can kind of see the women that hated him and then now they like him. I think Myron was the pioneer yeah. in waking women up to what's going on. Uh, I talked to Andrew yesterday and I like the, the thing about it is I can tell you actual women are like, I can't, I fucking hate that guy. Do you have his phone number? Like that, like real, literal conversations I, like that. I, I reacted to his first video. And like, I can tell automatically, and this is from bartending. This yeah. isn't like I'm spiritual. I can tell when somebody's putting on a show, why can't the rest of the world? And I'm talking like being funny, like being no, dramatic, sure, sure. like being a character. Why can't people see that? Be because I think he got to, well, I mean, I think no. Ro Rolo had it. Rolo had it right. It's like he didn't get banned because like right. the Ayatollah of Iran says horribly, horribly misogynistic shit. Yeah. Uh, and he still has a Twitter. He the, just the, gamed the system. The then. reason why, yeah, it's because he gamed the system. Yeah. It's because what happened is he used their algorithm against them. I know, and, yeah, and, like and, GameStop. And, and, by, and by doing that, that's why they had to cancel him. They just used the proxy of misogyny in order to have a reason of, you know, fire someone without cause. You fire someone in your business because you don't like them, but you find a reason in the rule right. book for firing him. Yeah. The reason was because he had made Put, some, some statements. And then the other, out, the other yeah. one is like, do you, do you remember the whole thing that triggered this was that one, I, I believe, I don't want to, he was a, he was a homosexual guy who had an 11, he had, he had a carousel and in the carousel was the grooming uh, post. Then there mm. was the post about, I wouldn't give CPR to a guy uh, because I'm not gay. And then the next one was the, um, the people supposedly the mm. human trafficking one, but, but you can see that the girl went outside yeah. and got a pizza. So it wasn't human trafficking. And then the next one was him slapping that girl. But I remember, didn't see this. Yeah, this that was the one that went viral, and right after that, he was canceled. Right? There was this one viral post that I saw a bunch of girls reposting, and it was, it was a carousel of 10 different things. And a, a bunch of it was taken out of context. The point I, the point I was trying to make is that mm -hmm. like, it got so big, and then it triggered these people to, to cancel him. Um, I'm going to say this again. I don't care who disagrees with me. You can disagree with me. You'll be wrong. Violent video games don't make kids right. violent. Mm -hmm. The studies have been done. Yeah. Andrew Tate does not make men misogynist yeah occasionally are there very outspoken men who are misogynists who are like i'm going to use andrew tate as exhibit a sure but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean andrew tate is a misogynist and that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that andrew tate makes people misogynist you know what's interesting is i would get so much hate from the group that you would think like would be the radicalized one that yeah. would take his message and like maybe do harm they're the ones hating on Tate. Like people forget that these people hate anybody that's above them. Sure. So it's like just because you believe with his message, you're gonna find every those guys are like very, very delusional. I don't know. I know what you're saying though, but I like I don't understand the whole big tech thing. Like, what like, what are they doing? There's just like pro extremely progressive people in all these technical. Got it. Uh, by, by the way, enough. Sorry. By the way, <laughs> the the fact that. Uh, Elon Musk buys Twitter and then unbans Tate is proof. To me, it's unassailable proof that the rest of them were in collusion. Does that see, make sense? See, this is where I'm lost because if Elon's big tech, right? Not anymore. No, no, he is. Okay, he is. He became part of big tech when he bought Twitter. Got it. And in doing so, he gave 
uh, uh, have you seen Donald Trump? Donald Trump is on a fucking roll right now. He is. He's got his account. He's back. got some shit to say. He's got his. He got his account Hell back, yeah. and he is going at people. You go, now. King. Yeah. <laughs> bye, 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 uh, so, so, but the, but the point is, like, like he gave them their accounts back. Yeah. And guess what? The world didn't end. People weren't yeah. crushed. The 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 platform. I, I have. Uh -huh. I have a feeling. Twitter will have its most profitable quarter in it forever. So wait, are you saying that because Elon is going against what big tech's status quo By the way, is? I don't even think he's doing that. I think he's just being normal. Yeah, right. Which is what he he's he's treating Twitter the way I would. You have an opinion? Cool. That's your opinion. You have a cool opinion? Yeah. Cool. That's your opinion. Cool. You guys yeah. can both be on my platform. That's the way I would have treated Twitter. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. But Jack Dorsey is this moronic belief that somehow Jack Dorsey was a little bit to the left and Elon is way to the right is fucking nonsense. Yeah. Elon Musk built electric cars to get us away from petroleum. He's not a neoconservative Nazi, you moron. He is slightly to the right. I, w I grant you slightly to the right. And Jack Dorsey was way further to the fucking left than, than Elon Musk is to the right. There's no perfect person mm. to own Twitter. Yeah, but like, here's where I get confused with Elon because yeah. he would in, he would say during the Roe v. Wade thing that he would incentivize the women to go get abortions in another state. Something tells me, I don't Which know. Which means he's not far to the right, is it? Right. Yeah. So like but when you say he- My point exactly, like yeah, he, yeah, he, he can have yeah. independent thought. See that those are the kind of people I like. And those like I'm. I thought you were saying he was the opposite. So that's no, why no, I was no, no. Like what I'm saying is what, what, what I'm saying is Jack Dorsey is apparently not dangerous because he's far to the left, but Elon Musk is dangerous because he's slightly to the right. That is where I find there to be hip hypocrisy. Elon Musk is way closer to the center than Jack Dorsey was. No, there's no perfect person to own Twitter. Whoever owns Twitter is going to have biases. Yeah. Ever right. But the the progressive. Uh, commentators on Twitter have not lost their accounts. He didn't take over take Twitter. Away, he didn't take yeah. over Twitter and then give Donald Trump and Andrew Tate back their accounts and then take away Rachel Maddow's account. He didn't do that. Yeah. He they're they're on there too. Yeah. So a fair marketplace where everyone can speak is apparently toxic now. That is what I find to be hypocritical What's and toxic bullshit. Toxic masculinity. Uh toxic what it actually is. So there were uh psychologists, I want to say back in the nineties, who were going through and um looking at prisoners, violent prisoners, mm -hmm. and they were looking at behaviorism, the behavior of some of these prisoners and how they adapted to living with other extremely aggressive, violent inmates. Yeah. And what they found was that like, oh, you stepped on my shoe. Now I'm going to stab you. Mm -hmm. They, they found that level of like, like Disregard. bravado, well, the, the, <laughs> but, oh, but the, to where it would escalate to murder immediately. Yeah. They found that to be toxic masculinity. So the term was used for felons, violent felons in prison. Mm -hmm. Somehow academia got a hold of that term and then used it to mean anything. Yeah. And it's it's complete misnomer. It makes no sense at all. Yeah. And it doesn't mean anything. It, it's almost like the word entrepreneur. You remember when the word entrepreneur was meant cool. something? Well, yeah. The word now it's like the guy that's at home yeah. wanking the, off. The, the, the word entrepreneur in 1995 <laughs> had a meaning. The word entrepreneur now means I take the investor's money and run off to Tulum with a bunch of girls, and then you never hear from me again. That's what entrepreneur. Fire means. festival guy. Yes, that's uh, fire festival guy. To now, it now is what the connotation of entrepreneur means. But entrepreneur, entrepreneur means is like the job that just the guys pick something that are at home with their moms. Like sure. that's how women see it. They're sure. like, oh shit, he's a fucking yeah. I, I, I make I make absolutely sure no one in my men of action mentoring course is ever allowed to put the word entrepreneur on their bio or ceo unless they have multiple people working for him so i am the ceo of moa and i have multiple people working for me and i will never put that shit on but, my fucking but on my, people on my deal. will people will be an owner of something yeah. and then you ceo and it bothers me i don't well, know okay, why so so, so, <laughs> so the reason why is when you incorporate in certain states you yeah. literally have to say ceo i know so it'll actually it'll actually write in it'll actually actually ask you, treasury, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually ask you to write insert yeah so that's that's Failed. the reason why they do that yeah <laughs> I so, failed. <laughs> right. So, but I, I, I don't use that word. I, yeah. I, am I an entrepreneur? Technically. Yeah. Am I an influencer? Sure. But the, God, I hate that word. I'd that say word. Playboy foam cannon party too. Yeah. I just, I don't. <laughs> <That> <laughs> I like Cat Dilf was my favorite one of all. Cat Dilf? Cat Dilf. Yeah. That was my favorite one. Miguel from uh, Dollar Cost Crypto. He's my version of an alpha male. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. He creates the the space. I talk about this container space. I'm sure you've yeah. heard of it. But where a woman can be on the hamster wheel and he's got it. He's chill. He's oh, beautiful. underrated nice. alpha male for nice. sure. I would told Rolo that. Yeah. Uh, Michaela Peterson. Um, Michaela Peterson. Very good at debate, I guess. Um, 
I don't really, I, I don't have anything. Is else. it weird that when I watch her, I always feel like she's like a couple steps away from crying. Just she has this face that looks like she's about to start crying. Is that weird? She's got that face of just confusion and okay. not not good social cues. Like when neither does her dad though. Like yeah. when like they somebody says something, they're like, okay. Like they say something. I'm like, that's not good w feedback. When her and Roller were going back and forth, were there a couple times where you uh, really thought the tears were about to come out? There were several times when I when I saw that. Uh, I, I think know. it may just be the the construction of her face. I don't know if that that was just something I she, noticed. She she's I don't know her, but she just see, she didn't read Rolo's books. Claims she did. Yeah. Gets on a podcast with him just to clear her name. Yeah. She like she made herself look worse, like because she d she didn't know the stuff that was in his books, which was literally like she's a walking she's the girl he talks about. Sure. But other than that, just a modern woman with a dad that thinks very traditionally, and there's yeah. a no one sees it. I don't know. Uh, Pearly things. Pearly things. Uh, Pearly's cool. She has had a significant amount m amount of growth. Um, she's I, rational. I looked her up the other day, and yeah. she had written me like a year ago. I didn't know who she was. I yeah. just got all these messages, and I, yeah. and I saw that she wrote me a long time ago. Yeah, no, she's she's gotten a lot of um, like everybody in the space on everybody, uh, but she works hard. Her parents are really cool. Her family is really cool. She comes from a big, big family. Mm. Um, dad's rich as fuck. Yeah. So here's here's the thing I want to talk about. Um, do you know that there's certain guys, especially like some of the mode one guys, they believe that the hyper hyper hypergamy is not real, or they believe it's a death sentence, something like that. Yeah. To me, from a strictly from a scientific standpoint, mm -hmm. let's look at data points. Let's take two data points. One is the GSS survey showing. Men between the ages of 18 and 30 having zero sexual partners, about 28% of them in 2018. Mm -hmm. I'm going to extrapolate 33% mm -hmm. now. Yeah, yeah. Going by that scale. Yeah. So a third of men between 18 and 30 having zero sexual partners. I'm also going to extrapolate. I would even say it's higher than that because men, they, they found that men lie. Sure. And if, if they had one partner, they really didn't have a partner. And yeah. I, I think it's a little bit bigger. That, that's that to entirely possible. Yeah. Now... The other thing being that 80% of men on dating apps are, are deemed unattractive. Uh, yeah. Okay. On Tinder specifically. These two things are very indicative of this hypergamy that isn't real. But it, I believe it is real. This idea that, that, you, that women are choosing. What's happened before is, uh, the way I would explain it, uh, you, I call it the Jojo Von Sothi effect. Mm -hmm. Jojo Von Sothi was the first girl I ever saw with a million followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. When she was 19, she lived in Wichita, Kansas, and I was a captain at McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita. Her mm -hmm. and I met up when at Chicago Pizza Kitchen, whatever. We had a couple of discussion. We, we you know, just as yeah. friends. We, we separated as friends. We stayed in touch. She ends up going into a magazine in Europe, another magazine in Europe, and then she ends up like being published. Uh, there were no blue check marks back then. This mm -hmm. is like 2012, somewhere in that area. Yeah. No, not 2012, before that. Couldn't outsource somebody to yeah. write an article on you? No, there were no blue check marks. I know, I'm, yeah. kidding, I'm kidding. So, so, so there. So she ends up getting, she's the first girl to a million, first girl I know to two million. Now she has about 10 or 11 million followers. Mm -hmm. I don't see her again. Remember, she's in Wichita, Kansas, and she works at Hooters in Wichita, Kansas. Mm -hmm. I don't see her again until I am in Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. And we're at the, we're at the uh, no, this is before that. I see her in Vegas on stage at a nightclub, and then I see her at Bulzarian's house. Oh. Now I want you to consider the implications of what I just said. Mm -hmm. The pretty girl at the Hooters in Wichita is now at the Maxim party and at Bulzarian's mansion. Right. There is no Wichita dating scene. There is no Waco dating scene. Yeah. There is no Secaucus dating scene. There is no Cheyenne, Wyoming dating scene. Yeah. There is one global dating scene. Mm -hmm. And because of that, whereas you were stratified amongst the other cardiologist, you know, um, whatever, uh, uh, injury attorney, personal, whatever guys are making two, $300,000 yeah. a year in your city, those were the guys you were competing against. Yeah. Now you are literally, not figuratively, competing with Leonardo DiCaprio mm -hmm. and Dan Bilzerian. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, now the hypergamy thing where it was just in individual cities is mm -hmm. now the whole global marketplace. Yeah. And then men before could be the cool guy, the mechanic, the who, whatever, and have status in his city without using social media. And my argument is today they can't. 
it's not possible. You are so far behind the curve because of these the advantages that these guys who are on social media. Mm -hmm. It's almost like saying, oh, I want to be the one guy in the Tour de France who isn't taking steroids. Yeah. When everyone else is taking steroids. And this is mm -hmm. really difficult for men because a lot of times them expressing themselves on social media comes off as not masculine. Right? Like the dog filters. The fucking, you know. They shouldn't all. be. Yeah. And, but do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think the pickup community fully bought into this. Did not encourage their their the, the fucking guys to pick up to get on social media. I they think they have. fully. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I think a lot of the coaches who, to be fair, aren't very good at their job, saw that their clients were weird, didn't want their weird clients going on social media and expo exposing their weirdness. Yeah. And so because of that, you have the entire pickup community just completely missing the boat on social media. Yeah. And now these men who are already behind are now further behind. Yeah. And now they're further behind. Mm -hmm. And now they're further behind. And that's to me along with the GSS survey and along with the whole thing on Tinder, mm -hmm. a clear, until it, it's a, uh, uh, hypergamy is falsifiable, but never been falsified. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And? Do you agree with that? I believe, I, I think hypergamy is very well established in the literature. I know like it's a possible strategy. I think it's, I don't think there's really any question about it. There's people, there's, there's people that will, I know what you're saying. What about from women? Question is about it from women. Do you believe that? I, I swear on my life, I would date a guy and I was dating him and I was like, but he doesn't have security. He mm. doesn't have money. I always went for guys that had a level of it. So they were always nice guys, respect, respectful guys. But I remember very clearly being like, I need a guy that has that stuff. So I left him. I think he... Did I dump him or did he dump? He dumped me, I think. He was older and he was like, he was moving or whatever. And I was psycho. I was young. I was like 18, <laughs> but like, whatever. It's fine. It was fine. So then I started, I was like, I want a guy that has money, whatever. So very vividly aware. And then I would be with this guy. I'm like, but I want a guy that I'm sexually attracted to. And I would convince myself that the next guy I would be sexually convinced or sexually attracted to and never was up until recently, but like, so I'm very aware of the switch. And I think if you asked women and explained it like that, like, were you with a guy from high school that mm. you were like, uh, he's kind of a loser. You want to find yourself. You want a guy that's established. They would absolutely say, yeah. Okay. So now this leads me to the question. Actually, Rollo had written this question also, and it was the idea. Now you are aware of hypergamy as a woman. I've and, always and, been and, and aware of red pill. Mm -hmm. Does that make it harder? You you saw when we did the Access Vegas thing. Yeah. The girl sitting here, and you were like the delu that the delusional calculator. Can't unsee it. it. It's just incredible when you and I have some 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 females that I know, and they'll say things to the effect of, "I want six two and the, you know and this income," and you're like, "Okay, cool. You have a .07 chance of meeting that person in the mm -hmm. United States." And even with that number in their head, they they aren't. They, it's not even a speed bump. Do you notice that they're not even discouraged? It's like, no, no. I will get in front of that man and my magic golden vagina will cause him to change his behavior, never cheat on me, and he's going to be with me forever. Well, yeah. Okay, keep going. But do you, do you, like, I see this over and over again with women and then I have this discussion with them and then when I, when, and the only thing that like inflates their discussion, like that their discussion c can stand on is soulmate. Yeah. Good energy. Yeah. The, uh, 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 earth signs. Yeah. My, uh, uh, what's it called? My love language. And I'm like, so your love language and the earth signs and all this kind of stuff is I going to is, is going to go against the fact that you have less than a one percent chance of meeting this guy, and even less like he'll sleep with you, mm -hmm. a far less than one percent chance of him locking you down, mm -hmm. and a far 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 less than one percent chance of him locking you down and not putting his penis in other women. Yeah, that's why. And they don't want to hear it. Yeah. So when I've explained it to women, I'm like, I first start with, do you realize that all of your you like do you realize that all women on like tiktok are like he's signs he's a narcissist mm -hmm. like to my girls i'm like you know that right and they're like yeah i do see that a lot i'm like did it ever occur to you that we're all fucking the same dudes and she was like or all of them were like oh and that's what we'll they'll pick up on first second every single interaction you have with a man is game sure it, it's all game sure Sometimes I like to separate to there's like your games, like your PUA tactics, but game, the dance between men and women. Shout out Roald Tomasi. It's in his fifth book, but it's all game. And when you understand that, 
the other thing I said. And then lastly, men will fuck anything if it had a hole. They would fuck a rock if it had a hole. I know it doesn't feel good, okay? But feelings are in girl it world. It chafes the You're rock. not supposed to have any, so fuck it. But they would, and when women understand that I, they I, would I, fuck anything. I, I believe men on balance, you're correct. And the majority of men that you will encounter as a woman are beta and would fuck anything. I agree with you, yes. Are you telling me I'm ugly? So I'm just kidding. No, no, just, you, just I'm in, saying in, your in general. Like I explain, you can, you can be the hottest woman in the world. Most of the men who you encounter, you're not going to find attractive. It doesn't make any difference. Oh, because eighty. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. The guy I'm with right now looks like a young David Gilmore with mm. uh, red hair, and okay. that's I've been looking for a ginger. So okay, that recessive trait. I have red hair. <laughs> yeah, going. you want to talk about delusional women? It's me. But um, anyway, so when you tell them that men would fuck anything. Mm -hmm. The, and I'm talking, they'll, they'll say like, yeah, I knew that. And I'm like, but, but do you know that? Do you really know? Like, like your Christian greys are fucking a, a rock with a hole. They have a torso on their bed right now. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, those other guys aren't getting laid. No wonder they sucked in the bedroom. That's another thing that they'll say. Yeah most guys do and so guys will lie about their number too and so women think that these guys that they might be messing with are high value but they're not and so when i tell them all of this they've taken it and they've just that they've changed their strategy. you've noticed them change their strategy. yeah i, I frequently notice them not change their strategy. well they're older on your podcast okay. right no they're, no, no. they're in their ways no, no, I wouldn't not, either. It's not that. It, younger, older, whatever. What I found is that they agree with everything I'm saying. They tell me they're going to change their strategy and they keep fucking Chad. That's what I've seen. I think that the women on your podcast, one, they're beautiful. Two, they're confident. Like you can't work in Vegas without having like both of those. And then three, I think like a lot of people will disagree with me, but some people don't care that much no. to find a mirror. Like For sure. they're making bank. Yeah. Like, and like... They trust me, they don't want to end up with a guy that will drag them down, a fucking loser. Sure. And that's majority right now. So, um, but yeah, can you talk about red pill ASMR? What about it? What, what, where did that come from? Uh, dude, I told you, like, literally, people were like, Can you put ASMR in your titles? I was like, Say no more. And it, my score went from like 50 to 100, and I was getting a lot of hits. I do SEO stuff, so I just never thought like it would do that, but yeah. Maybe we should have done this whole episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like this, it, I know, but. Like being a beta bitch. <laughs> bitch. You're no. Such a bitch. <laughs> Wait, what's such that one bitch. whisper song? Oh, how'd it go? Do you know what I'm talking about? The no. whisper song. The ASMR. I'm hey, one of pretty girl. I don't know what it is, but yeah. it's so funny. <laughs> I tell everybody. But it's the number one thing searched with my name. Isn't it crazy? It's not wild. Fucking weirdos. Like, get a hobby. Get a hobby. Stop. Tape your mouth. Fix your chin. Go to the gym. <laughs> Fix, your Fix your chin. I'm done. You got to get the music. Fix your mouth. We don't have the music. <laughs> it's hard to do it with these mics. Stop being a beta bitch. <laughs> I told my clients. I'm making this a sound effect on my fucking I told, board. I told my clients before I go, that's all this is going to be. It's going to be like. No, cock. my voice has been annoying this whole time. You're a cock. You're <laughs> John Almalty is a cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Here's the TikTok. 100%. Yeah. Oh, he's going to come after Could you? How funny would it be if you had a discussion with Rolo and you responded in ASMR the entire time? That would be hilarious. I'm always in ASMR. I just, I don't change it. It's just my voice. It doesn't sound ASMR right now. Yeah. It's a different mic. I, I use like the, I amp it up under boost and stuff. Okay, got it. <laughs> it sounds weird. Yeah. But yeah. That's funny. And I have to be quiet in my house because my parents. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Okay. Um, here's a couple of things. Do you tell the girls that they should stay at home with their parents because guys will think you fuck around? You no, gotta, that's, an, that's a really interesting. You got to tell them. That's that a one. really interesting concept. Because they're always like, I'm, I, I have a job. I live in my own place. Yeah. Tell them that guys don't like when you live on your own. They think you're a hoe. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know what? Some, something that, uh, kind of a realization I've had in the last six months mm -hmm. from becoming friends with Rolo. Mm -hmm. talking to you and then comparing the experiences that you guys talk about with my friends who I'm not going to lie. They're out in these fucking streets. These are the women. A lot of you guys are complaining about. They own it though. Yeah, they are. They completely own it. Yeah. But, but like, again, 
have some empathy for these women. At what point are you, when you're making 300,000 a month, do you kind of not give a shit about finding your soulmate? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so until uh, you realize that when you look at lesbian couples, if one, like if they go on a date that there's some stat, it shows that even lesbian couples don't accept only fans girls. That's weird. That's fucking insane. Isn't that crazy? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that's actually going to change. Like I think the Overton window keeps shifting to the left on I whatever we're talking so. about. You think that we're going to get to a point where, I've, like, I think I think OnlyFans mo OnlyFans mm. girls are going to be PTA moms. I do. You watched my video, didn't you? Yeah, and I, of course. Yeah, I no, I don't think so. I think we got enough trad cons. They'll come after them and they'll go full force. I think I think you're going to see trad cons on OnlyFans. Yeah. You know. They're going to be like ah. Right, there's going to be an American flag. What do you in the think about OnlyFans? Do you think it's equivalent to porn or do you think it's cheating? What do you mean it's cheating? You know how they say cheating what? Like if a guy watches a specific like your boyfriend, like uh -huh. my boyfriend or whatever, has a girl that he watches on OnlyFans, isn't that equivalent equivalent to him emotionally cheating? So for men, we don't believe in emotional cheating. But right? that he's giving me or giving her his resources. So, so you're, you're, but hold on, but you're asking me as a man yes. about emotional cheating, and we don't believe in emotional cheating. But I think for that a, guys for a man, this is what cheating looks like. A cheating is penetration. That I, is the only thing that cheating means to us. Did, you, you could ask another woman this question and she probably no, would agree with you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try it in a different way. Okay. Okay. Men right now, let's say no OnlyFans. They are just jacking off to porn. That's uh -huh. it. Whatever. You hear about the girlfriend experience, but now it's really playing out where guys are seeking like companionship yeah, most of those because guys... they're not fucking them. Okay, Remember, okay. it's not physical. But, but if they're seeking the girlfriend experience, are they really fucking a hot girl who they're cheating on in the first place? They're emotionally cheating. Yeah, but with who? Like, in order for you to they're messaging hold on, them. Hold on. In order for you to be, I got them. <laughs> in order for you to be emotionally cheating, yeah. there has to be a woman at home who would be willing to have sex with you in the first place. And the guys who are, who are paying for the girlfriend experience, yeah. I don't think a lot of them have girlfriends. But so is it cheating? I, I don't. I, if well, he has an OnlyFans girl, here's here's a question: Should alcohol be legal? You're missing my point. No, no, I'm trying to make a different point. Should alcohol be legal? Yes. Okay. Should no, it should be illegal. Should, should, should marijuana no. be legal? Illegal. The answer is maybe I don't know. The answer is they should. If both of them, they either should both be illegal or both be legal. Right. Based on what the Overton window is on that. In yeah, that country I agree that with you. So your to answer your question, if OnlyFans is cheating, then so is porn, and if OnlyFans isn't cheating, then neither is porn. That's the answer that I would give. I would be fine if my boyfriend and was I'm, watching and, porn. And I'm way way off with you as far as the Overton window. We will have OnlyFans models as a mayor of a fucking city in the next 10 years. I hope I so. Maybe you. maybe they'll take I, men's way, phones I'm not, away. I'm not saying it's good. <laughs> I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying people are so unrealistic about how, for those of you who don't understand what the Overton window is, in 1982, if you go on to the House of the Senate and be like, I'm in favor of gay marriage, you get laughed off the stage. I laughed out, out of the pulpit. In, 19, in 2022, if you come out here and say, I'm against gay marriage, you get laughed off the pulpit. It's mm -hmm. the Overton window on gay marriage, regardless of what you think about gay marriage, it has shifted 180 degrees in the last 30 years. And my point, and the thing is, these things tend to shift to the left. In fact, I can't think of anything that doesn't shift to the left. Over time, like what conservatives are doing is they're holding on to their bits of conservatism as things shift, shift to the left. I'm saying this as a conservative myself. Just tell them not to eat paint. Yeah, don't eat paint. Like, Jesus. But, but, right, don't, the, the, the they tide, get so literal. The, the Tide Pods. The Tide Pods. <laughs> yeah. The Tide Pods don't taste as good as you think. They don't taste as good as they look. Yeah. The, the point I'm trying to make is I believe, whether or not, I'm not making a, I'm not making a, a moral judgment here. Mm -hmm. The acceptance of OnlyFans is going to be ubiquitous soon. Mm -hmm. It will. It, and I'll tell you, do you remember that girl that was on here and people were just trashing her? I Which knew, one? Um, this was the, la the last time I did Access Vegas, last Friday. The girl was sitting right here. And the she, one that was next to Cappy? Yeah. So she had made, yeah. she had made, she's made something like $10 million selling uh, uh, real estate. And she fucks on OnlyFans and she she was on Brazzers. Mm -hmm. the, the guy's brains were melting. Like, how could this possibly be? Because you're supposed to be an OnlyFans hoe and have no future in your life. <laughs> The fact that you're we actually... We all become... I don't have an OnlyFans, but nightclub girls. We all go through the stages. Yeah. Hooters, nightlife, bottle girl, whatever. Real estate. Uh, real estate. Yeah. I did loans, but like, real yeah. Real estate, mortgage broker, crypto. Nobody gives a fuck. They yeah. don't do background checks. Yeah, that's, that's my, my point was that she was doing them both at the same time. Yeah. She was supposed to be excommunicated from the 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 legitimate industry of real estate. They won't get rid of you if you make money. Thank you. Yeah. They care uh -oh. about uh -oh. Mo money. Uh-oh. Yeah. And guess who makes money? OnlyFans girls. So this idea that we're going to get to this point where, like, I disagree with you with the Lana Rhodes PTA thing. There's going to be... 
The, 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 I'm not saying it's bad. I'm, I'm I'm saying it won't happen. I don't think Lana Rhodes will be excommunicated by the PTA. Mark. I don't think I don't think that either. I'm saying that like we have to shift into this new system. I'm really big on moving forward. I don't move back. I am not yeah. a tradcon. I don't believe in that shit. I think it's almost in a way. I won't even go there. I, I, I don't have an opinion. Yeah. I'm telling you the world. It's almost like I have an opinion on gravity. You know, like half of my friends are on OnlyFans. I, I, I know more than half of my friends are on OnlyFans. I'm just saying, I don't. I have no shame on OnlyFans. I mean, <laughs> Keeping your girl off OnlyFans one chat at a time. One chat at a time. Yeah, I, I don't hate that shit. I'm just saying, like, we've gotten to a point where we need to accept that we're commodifying, the like, our bodies in a more perverse way i guess so like now you, what? Think, you think we should accept it okay interesting. well i don't think we have a choice i don't think you have Agreed. a choice Agreed. i don't think any man has a that choice I, at all that part i agree with yeah. yes guys keep thinking they're the gatekeepers of relationships and that's all great and dandy until this is another thing that i'm like iffy on and rollo has backed me up on this is that like the women will always be the gatekeepers of sex because think of or of sex and relationships because interesting. because we can keep pushing OnlyFans. At one point, you're just going to be so desperate to get something that you'll wife the OnlyFans. Maybe you can be on camera too. Yeah, so there, there's they no, change their here's, shit. Here's the thing. There's no maybe. Uh, girls that I know on OnlyFans are repeatedly getting marriage proposals. Uh, that's what which, I'm which saying. Which makes more red no pill dudes so angry. Me. But it's yeah. the truth. No constantly getting married. I talk proposals. about this. This idea that you can't, you're, they're not going to lock anyone down. If the OnlyFans girls are willing to just tune the knob, the alpha knob down to just a just little a bit, little. just a little bit of to like just top get beta, rid of looks. like a little bit of beta, maybe get rid of looks, maybe get just rid of get like rid money. Of looks. If they're willing yeah. to do that, they will get marriage proposals. Absolutely. And guys are like, no, that's not true. It is true. That's, and, that's incels. That's yeah, not us. For sure. Like but, a, well, the, that's who's ever commenting on my, the YouTube Yeah, videos. you're getting whoever, incels. Whoever, whoever co comments on the, on the YouTube live streams. And by the way, I have no problem with you guys saying whatever you want about women on the YouTube live streams. However, if you're going to denigrate a woman by her looks, she's not looking at my comments. Yeah. So you're not teaching anyone a lesson. So yeah. here's the rule from this point forward. If you want to say something about a girl's looks or boobs or lips or whatever, that's fine. You also need to write me on Instagram and show me the girl you're dating. That's the rule. If you don't do that, you're blocked. Show me your DMs. Yeah, show no, I'm just I'm just show me that you I don't want to hear you denigrate women unless you show me you're good with women. You show me you're good with women, call them what at 304s, whatever. But the no guy, more, you don't get to call them 304s unless you show me you're good with women. You no know mad, no um, guy that is alpha that gets women would ever say that about them. Thank you. That's my point. They but love I'm, I'm, pr I'm proving the point. And here's yeah, the other thing. They sound stupid. No, no no offense to you guys. I don't give a fuck about you because none of you own a business or make any money, you couldn't afford my program to begin with, so I couldn't don't really care Couldn't even get a think. bitch, and all you have to do is talk about tattoos and astrology. I mean, it's... <laughs> Just astrology, and you can get one. <laughs> yeah, that's energy, that, crystals. That's exactly right. Uh, <laughs> one last thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, because Elon Musk got... Um, he bought Twitter. Andrew Tate got his account back a couple days ago. I wrote him. Did back. he? Yeah. I, I congratulated him yesterday on getting his getting account back. He told me he's yeah. not coming back to the States. He's like, oh, you got to come out here and interview me. So I do plan on going to oh Romania or somewhere out there Top in, in, G. in the Eastern uh, in the Eastern Hemisphere to interview Andrew. Um, what do you think about this whole situation? Because you were early on. You got that Tom Segura interview. That was before he was huge. In fact, he may have not even had a blue check mark when you yeah. interviewed him. Uh, so can you talk about... I didn't interview him. I'm I sorry. When you, re when you reacted to him. I'm a basic bitch. When you reacted to him. <laughs> yeah. I, what about him? What, what do you think about his ascension and then his cancellation? Oh, he'll be back. Well, he's already kind of back, but like... He, that's what I'm saying. Is like, it was just a matter of time. What, what do you think was the thing that triggered... To, to me, those 28% of men having zero sexual partners, it wasn't just that they were having zero sexual partners. Mm -hmm. It's that they, they were invisible. In yeah. all other aspects. Like women didn't even notice that, yeah, that they, they, they existed. Them. Therefore, there was that the, the audience to be spoken to. Yeah. And he spoke to that audience. Yeah. And that audience has money and muscles. They don't have game. But they have some. Not yet. Like, yeah, but exactly my point. They have. They do count. Guess what? They can vote just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. They can have open internet. They have internet accounts. They have YouTube accounts. They These guys, even though they're not putting their penises in women, still do have some power. And there were a lot of them. Yeah. And he spoke to them. And those guys got angry because they started realizing, well, the reason why I wasn't having sex was not was that there's actually a reason why I wasn't having sex. There's actually yeah. things happening that were causing this to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think he, just very similar to the coal miners in West Virginia during the Trump, administ the yeah. Trump election, mm -hmm. or African Americans who felt disenfranchised during the Obama administration, yeah. I believe that Andrew Tate was speaking to these 
33 percent of men having zero sexual partners amongst other men there's probably I, other men too. i think he like hmm, women used to be the reason that men worked hard mm -hmm. like they used to be the reason for everything they got married whatever whatever when women don't want them anymore and they're at the point where they're literally left behind you got to keep the morale up somehow and i literally think andrew date was incredible at that and like people laugh like oh morale and it's like well what else what why should a guy improve himself think about it when yeah. you when a guy's beat down and shit and they're lonely and nobody sends them a dm they're lucky if they get a swipe on tinder in six months like no one sees them like nobody is messaging them he, they're not getting fire emojis i try to say this for my bitches that watch bro, bro, no hold on, hold on. but when like the, when, they're the, hold on, when they're the cashier at walmart no one literally sees them I, i'm not talking about having sex no one even sees they exist you, i just did a video like this girl I, she was asked something like the guys what what do the guys with the weird profiles have in them because she would say like oh they said something she was like can you be specific no that is proof that she only she like remembers it a little bit like weird thing but they're only remembering the profiles that they swiped on of course we're taking our activation system and heuristics of course and like i would be like as a bartender hey this guy bought you shots can you go say uh thank yeah. you it increases my tip and they're like well, where? And yeah. I'm like literally there. And they They didn't see him. No, not like they did not see him. And I'm like, what the fuck? That was my first time. I was like, damn, they really don't see them. Myself included. So sad. But now I see y'all. Yeah. I see all of y'all before you, so you, you walk you in. Think, and you believe like I do that Andrew Tate said something to those men which caused them to get fired up and he has twelve billion unique uh, hashtags. Yeah. Uses of his name on TikTok was the most Google person in the world because yeah. of this. I I mean, well, the strategy. I mean, yeah. we want to get really technical. He he's gonna go down in history as doing some marketing like uh, genius. They will, they will write books on what he did. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But like, aside from that, uh, like women that were like doing the trend on TikTok, like, what do you think of Andrew Tate? Like, if any women are watching this, ask yourself why did he get so popular? Yeah. Because although, yeah, you can have a bunch of people post in your content, he got a lot of views on that content. That was my best content, anything with him. So ask yourself, hmm, maybe my boyfriend's lying, which it's game. But like they don't, women are like, I like a guy that's nice, all this shit. And they're like, I'm like, that's game. Like, like it's all game. Interesting. So Agreed. Uh, all right, where can we find you? Because we need to do another three hours at some other point. Where, Hell yeah. Where, where, where can we find you? You guys can find me on YouTube at Torsha with two A's and then also TikTok, Torsha Podcast. And then should I look over here? Sorry. Uh, that's really it. Don't DM me though. Like, no? Don't send me DMs. It, I can't even get back to people like you and Rolo. It's a problem now. I'm not husband hunting. Because there's a lot of dudes hitting you up on DMs? Dude. Yeah? Uh, just a lot of people. Girls and guys. I'm like... I. I can't do You're still it. on TikTok too? Yeah, I haven't posted recently, but yeah. I do it slowly. I don't want to get like hit with the algorithm. I just have a I have a uh, a manager and we just do shorts, TikTok, reels, everything. I have like I'm supposed to have over a couple hundred thousand, but every time I look at it, it's 48.4 and it and I'll say every time I open it, a thousand uh friend things I have it the won't exact change. Same problem. I downloaded it, re-downloaded it. I can't get rid of it, so I, I don't know what's going on. Awesome. So I, yeah. But that's awesome. It. Well, we're excited. Uh, I would definitely want to have you back on again. Do a yeah. live stream. I'm going to do a live stream here in 30 minutes if you want to go do one with me. Get uh, CJ. Huh? CJ Sparks? Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I she, love her. She's one of my favorites. I love her. She's terrific. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for, for joining us. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I loved, I was very excited to have her on because she's, mm -hmm. uh, she's a, you know, she's got a very different uh, viewpoint and, and Rollo brags about you all the time. And no matter what Rollo says, he does have a female friend. So you guys, you guys. Colleague. Huh? Colleague. No. He's a female friend. You can kiss my ass. Hey. Listen. <laughs> we're, uh, so anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, I do appreciate all the growth. I appreciate all you guys coming on and subscribe. All you subscribers are keeping keeping your boy off OnlyFans uh, one subscriber at a time. And I still want to say I appreciate that. Did you just take <laughs> That's fucking haram. Oh, my <laughs> God. Terrible. All right, guys. See you all next week.